department. Fuck B. 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 You're now tuned into the Apartment 5B podcast, where we chop it up about hip hop, R and B, sports, love, and life. Hosted by Kill. 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 What's good, what's good, what's good? You are tuned to Apartment 5B Podcast, hosted by your man, Kill, as always. Ladies first, Porsche, what's going on, miss? Not a whole lot, Kill. How are you? Hey, everything is good. Everything is good. DJ Rec 1, it's been a minute, man. Right. Where you been, man? Everything Welcome good? Welcome back. Yeah, everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything is good, man. Happy to be back, man. Happy to be back. Just trying to handle some business. You got to keep your head right. So, no doubt, no doubt. Oh, now, my brother burned out the ATL to close. If you're looking for a crib in ATL, it's the man you need to go see. What's going on with you, Vern? He is I, I is him. Yo, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> Glad to be my here, man. Eddie out of LA. What's going on, Ed? Yo, I'm, I'm doing good, man. Glad to be here. You and Porsche rocking them twin Linden Boulevard yeah. tribe joints. As we need to synchronize like that, you know. We just... <laughs> Same brain. Yo, and today we got a very special guest. If you have been following me on the timeline, if you've seen any episodes of Apartment 5B recently, my top album of 2021 so far has been 21 grams. Pete Rock and Amir. We got my guy Amir chopping it up with us tonight. What's going on, good brother? Hey man, thank you for having me. That's a hell of an intro, man. You know, <laughs> I'm just gonna say first, first and foremost, thank you for having me once again. Uh, and 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 you know, for picking, you know, what me and Pete put together, man. Like I said, I'm a student of the game, bro. So I think working with him was um, almost a cheat code as far as like yeah. down scale. So we'll get into that. Though. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. I got a million questions for you, but as always, y'all know me. If we ever have anybody special on with us, we want to integrate them regularly into the show. My man Neltron the other day posted Bilal's first born second, and it was like the 20th anniversary. Love that album. And I was sitting there thinking, I said, yo, this might just be my favorite soul album out of Philly. Of course, I'm talking 2000 plus. I'm not talking to Gamble and Huff and yeah. all that. I'm talking to the, the the Neo Soul out of all those albums, the cast like Jill Scott. Da, da, da. So it just got me thinking of, yo, when you think of a city, a borough, what's the first album that comes to mind from that borough or city? So that's what we chopping it up about today. When you hear Brooklyn, what is the first album that comes to mind when you hear Queens, so on and so forth? Porsche, I heard you got 4,722 albums <laughs> in, the, in, in, in the chain, but at night four. So <laughs> let, let's go you're to gonna, Brooklyn first. You're going to get all of these ties, okay? Like, I when, can't with you. When you think of Brooklyn, if somebody who didn't know anything about hip hop comes to you and says, yo, Brooklyn, what is the first album you think of? Not MC, but album. What's the first album you want them to listen to? Ready to Die. But I wanted to, like, I try to be varied with my, cause I'm always talking about the same albums, but obviously there's a reason. So I've got that tied with Light as a Rock because you guys know ah, MC Light nope. is on You can my... only pick one. Nope, okay, nope, nope. Okay, fine, I'll you go with your Ready. one. Okay, fine. Stop, stop it. <laughs> I'm like ready to die. You thank you, Vern, for the flag on the play real quick. I'm a bad guy, like, thank you, Vern. I... <laughs> yeah, I got Ready to Die and I, I don't wanna, I mean, I always talk about this album. I've done, you know, we've done episodes about why this album's so dope. Um, it's big. I mean, it's big, and I feel like he is Brooklyn through and through for me. Um, and I think he he kind of embodies that, and and he reps that hard. And um, I think Ready to Die is a really good representation of of Brooklyn. And I think Brooklyn would be it, it, like would be proud of that too. So no I'm doubt. going with Ready to Die. All right, no doubt. Amir, what you got for Brooklyn? Um. I'm going to pivot off of that, but because of my relationship with this guy, man, he's one of my um, like, uh, early mentors, first dude to ever take me on tour with him. Um, I was like, you know, teenager. Talk about, this might have been like 10 years ago, 10, 11 years ago. I was AZ, man. 
Which one? What album? It's AZ Do or Die, man. And the reason why I picked that album is not just because of, I think he represents the quintessential Brooklyn, New Yorker that wasn't necessarily super duperly, super duper commercial, but he, to me, he's a fiber of what a Brooklyn dude is, what an MC from Brooklyn is, and his historical backdrop. He's in a lot of rooms. Um, and one of the first, like I said, one of the first, first artists to, um, me on tour with him, bro, and he came out. People don't know that about me. It was, yeah, he. So I, it would be disrespectful to my, to my story to not say Az. Az was, mm-hmm. um, yeah. I'm gonna give it to him, doled out, bro. As though one thing I think, and you said it, he was in a lot of rooms. Cast forget, Az was up in there in the Dead President video, playing yeah, Monopoly really. with the real money yeah. with Jenny yeah. and, and Big, and you know yeah, what I mean. So. Highest, yeah, you know, so so cats forget about that. Uh, for me, out of Brooklyn, I'm old as hell, so I'm going to have to pull out Long Live the King. You know what I mean? This was just, I mean, going back to them 12-inch days of Raw, set it off. Again, like, it was almost like we were talking about Rock Kim the other week where it's talking about how can it get any better. I heard Raw, I'm like, yo, this is the craziest shit ever. Then you hear set it off, and you're like, God damn, this is the craziest thing ever. And ain't no half stepping, and, and you know, then this just drops. So for me, whenever I think of Brooklyn, I'm always thinking of uh, Big Daddy Kane. So I'm going with Long with the Kane on that. DJ Rec One, what you got for Brooklyn? That's a dope pick, man. Uh, I teetered back and forth between that one and some others. Uh, I'm going with Reasonable Doubt, man. Um, yeah. For me, it was more so the fact that I had no idea the album dropped. The person who gave me the album didn't even like it. And then when I put it in, I never stopped listening to it. You know what I'm saying? So I think from a standpoint of just no one knowing or remembering who he was at the time. And it took, what, two years for that album to pick up steam. It's an album that you could play now and be like, damn, he, he put this out 25 years ago? Like, it, it still resonates. You know, it was, it was the perfect album for the underdog at that time. Cause it was everything that hip hop was not and it still was fire right you know so i'm going reasonable doubt man all right Vern, what you got bro do you understand the meaning of the metaphoric phrase light as a rock <laughs> <laughs> dude yeah. dude light is i mean light as a rock mc light swinging 10 percent this paper thin I cram to understand and then kick this one for Brooklyn. Brooklyn <laughs> yeah. Kick yeah. this one for the 90. Yeah, man. MC Light getting her props from me. I shouted her out today on Twitter, man. So definitely, I, I would say uh, out of Brooklyn, MC Light Light is a rock. No doubt, no doubt. Eddie, rounding us out. Who you got for Queen? I mean, for Brooklyn. All right. So um, originally, when I did my list, I was thinking of my favorites, but. If you're talking about which one would I put someone onto that represents Brooklyn, I'm gonna go with Smith and West and The Shining. Mm. You know what I mean, and um, yeah, you know you could just take mm. you could take Booktown alone, and 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 that's a dope uh, anthem yeah. for the girl. But you know the thing I love about that album is just the the amount of culture in there. You know what I mean? Because you know I think they got like some of that West Indian influence that you know was very prevalent and 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 many parts of brooklyn so you know i mean when, when i listen to that album you know i get that feeling again you know of being back in the borough all right no doubt no doubt Porsche. we in the queens now what you got for queens i got Remy mc raising hell um mm. and and the reason for that is Remy mc is the reason why i even know hip-hop at all um i think i've told this story on previous episodes uh there is no like I don't, like, it's part of my story with hip hop um, because I was from, as I always mention, um, north of North Dakota in Canada. So hip hop was very, very difficult to come by. And of course, Run DMC was, I was able to, you know, that was the that, that was the reach and i was able to hear them and that was my first sort of introduction to hip hop and so for me that's just a pillar it's a pillar of of not only hip hop but queens for sure so that one for me all right no doubt what, what's your favorite album out of queens 
my favorite album out of Queens. Yeah, your favorite album, because I know you got six thousand four hundred. Yeah, I bought. Yeah, so I got. What this? You know, what's your favorite. Cheryl Monch, Internal Affairs is another one. Um, right. I I absolutely love that album. Um, Monch is, you guys know, like Monch is an alien with it. Um, lyrically, he's he just is the best. Um, Simon Says is still forever going to be my favorite Monch joint. Um, I love it and I think he's just always been so consistent lyrically and I'm lyrics over even over production most of the time so um for me it's just it's gonna be Monch all right As no my doubt. Amir, Amir what you got out of Queens what, what, what reps Queens and then what's your favorite Queens album because I know everybody had a hard time putting this list together so yes I want to try to put so you get you know what? What, what reps the borough and then what's your favorite out the borough I'm gonna go with um for Queens. Matter of fact, shout out to Pharrell Monch. He, he he's from, he, a lot of people that know he's from Queens too, which is crazy. Um, I actually met him last week for the first time. Cool, cool, cool. But I'm gonna say, yeah, yeah, I didn't know the two people in the band is in the, in the group with him. Thirteen, that last album fight. But the Queens for me, it was in it. It's who? I know nobody nobody moved on that. And I'm gonna say, what you say? What you say? Okay, I'm saying it was for me. It was written. Queen. Oh. I ain't mad at that. Nah, not at all. Yeah, I'm a, and, and, and I say it was written because, I mean, it dramatic is in a, a different category. Don't even we gotta call that a. That's not even an album. That's 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 a pillar of right. hip hop writing, right? Artistry. Uh. It was written showed a, a, a certain level of evolution. I think his his uh, his his, evol- his 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 progression from uh, in projects to taking a step out of the projects to opening his eyes to the world outside of that. And I think it showed um, that it showed um, how other people received them and like through his lens how he was writing it. Um, I think it was written with clever, um, and it was just the first. It was the first mature. The first stage of a mature Nas that we heard right. was on it was written, in my opinion. Yes. And this is subjective uh, as a writer. Um and uh and because of also I guess uh like I said, I, as a as a, as a kid out, you know, you know, shout out to to you know, uh my man Dio and other people was working with him earlier. So I just had the privy I was privy and and, and I'ma say privy and, and blessed or lucky enough to know some people that worked on some of these early projects and the stories I heard um, between Elmata it was written and how things came together and even just knowing A, it made it made me have a more um, attachment to it even though I didn't know them but I knew some of the stories from first people so to me it was written because it represents that step off the porch from that initial Elmata and you said you said a group right off. Well, not your favorite. That like that's what reps the Queens. But is that is that your favorite album out of Queens? Like, what's your favorite, just personal favorite album out of Queens? I'm gonna keep it a buck, bro. I'm, I'm still sticking with that. Nice. All right, it was right. I can't. Yeah. I'm sticking with. I'm I'm, 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 I'm gonna stick with that because yeah. it, it 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 was it was double fold. The blonde, she rocked the blonde season. That shit. It was, it was vivid, bro. Like it was, I, I, it's quotables on there that that stuck to the ribs for for, for years. Like it out, right. it's it's do forever stand the test of time. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Like I always tell people, whenever I want to hear some Nas, I always pull. It was written even before Illmatic. You know what I mean? I don't know if that means in my head is better than Illmatic, but whenever I'm like in the mood for Nas, I'm always gonna <laughs> pull. It was written before Illmatic, so. That's and just it Amir is absolutely right. The quotables are for days because yeah. my favorite quotable in all of music comes from that album. Like all of music, not just hip hop, just entirely. So yes, good point. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. For me, out of Queens, I'm like Porsche, but I'm going with the OG Run DMC. Uh, probably because everything on here was a, a, a Hollis crew. When I heard Hollis crew, it was like, yo, where's Hollis? It's like, oh, that's Queens. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And just to me, these dudes were like so synonymous with Queens. It was like Kings from Queens and from Queens comes Kings. You know what I mean? So this was just, and that's a quote off of Raising Hell, but that's right there. Run DMC just always represented Queens to me. Um, this album, Five My Classic, one of my favorite hip hop albums ever, like I said, 
a piece of my foundation in this game. My favorite album out of Queens, and this always shocks everybody, is actually Super Love is and Casting Over Rudd's Girls I Got Them Locked. Pump it this up. right here. <laughs> you know, Girls I Got Them Locked. <laughs> if you've never heard this album, like Fife, another Queens representative would say, you need to listen to this right, not now, but right now. I'm bad. Girls act stupidly. All UMCs get no deeper. Pump it back. Girls, I got them locked. Come and get some super cast over due to James. If you've yeah, never heard due to James, yeah, right, James is fine. You really got to do some homework out there, man. I'm, that's that's gonna be your homework for the night. Due to James by uh, Super Love seeing cast over us. So that's my personal favorite rack. What are you picking out of Queens? Man, as the Queens kid. Uh... I'm going with my guys, man. I had a dream about my man last night. <laughs> From Buster Rhymes, he came to the studio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> man, you got to understand, man. My uncle was a police officer in the 113. So I spent a huge part of my youth outside of Far Rockaway in Jamaica, Queens, man. Driving past the cleaners where they filmed um, the videos. At. Like that, that was a staple. And being able to be around that, man. That's my one regret in life that I never got to go to a Tribe Called Quest show. That's like my, like, I don't have regrets, but if I had one, that's one of them. I, that's like one of the first ones out of my mouth. Um, but but Low End Theory for me, like, I'm a Tribe head. So when I heard Low End Theory, it was like, oh, shit. This don't sound like ham and eggs. Nope. <laughs> right. This right. this sounds totally different. Nope. Now, I, now, trust me, as a 12-year-old, I fucked with ham and eggs. Don't get it twisted. But as a 13 almost 14 year old when you know you start hearing excursions and bugging out you're like whoa 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 okay this is a whole different situation and it wasn't sonically their best album but to me this is the one that sticks with me i can play this for days so that's 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 the album if somebody came to me and said yo if you're gonna take somebody to queens or you're gonna take somebody to your grandma's and far rockway what you gonna play i'm playing this mm -hmm. um as far as you said favorite queens album favorite queens shit huh. yeah for sure i'm stuck man all right um, that's all good i'm all stuck right. what you got man i forgot i should have said cnn war report i'm my bad that's <laughs> i mean shit yeah. See, you know, hey. 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 money you can't God. go wrong with that oh, man. I just, I just respect to see it. I'm sorry, and I'm a CNN head. I'm sorry. Yo, no, that, yeah, that move, that man. move was crazy. You know what, man? The funny thing is, I always talk about how you know my memories of when I was hanging out in Queens was always, you know, my cousin always mm -hmm. bumping the War Report when that came out. Yes, you sir. know, that was the soundtrack. It was. Yeah. It yeah. was. It was playing everywhere, heavy. Vern, what you got for yours? Quick what's question. Right. What's rapping Queens? What you saying, man? No, I'm, 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 I was just saying that anybody noticed on the War Report, sonically, the album was mixed as if they were in Desert Storm. The, the delays on the record were delayed. Like, remember how when Desert Storm, like, I, I don't remember, but they, when you yeah, watch the like news when the clips, TV joined, yeah, on, the news. It was a... It was a Delayed, and then the album was the delay, like they was reporting from Saudi Arabia. So that's why they said Channel Ten, Channel Ten, dun, 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 dun. so all that shit. I, I sat down one day and I analyzed this shit. I said, "Yo, this is whoever did this shit is is, is a is a slept on genius because the album was mixed like a news reporter with delete all over the entire album. That gave it that real without yeah. echo." Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Vern, what you got, bro? All right, so Red Red took my first one, but I I just wanted to say because because low low end is, is fresh, freshman year at at Georgia State. I remember riding the train, listening to that mug on the on the Walkman, and yeah. But so I'm gonna go my favorite Midnight Marauders. Mm. You know, you since know, since Rex took my first favorite, favorite, my bad, well, and I, I shouldn't even have to say why. But okay. okay, but I would but say, I would say the, the album that album represents me to, me to me is the Infinite. It's, it's it's grimy, grimy gritty, gritty. You know that that done language, all that kind of stuff. You know, and that, they're not even one of my favorite groups per se. But 
when I think of Queens, <laughs> it's, it's the infamous in Mob Deep. That's a dope pick right there. I mean, you can't go wrong. I mean, there's so many pieces you could throw at it. And that's why I love this because everybody's music, I tell people, it speaks to everybody different. Like, and I mean, low end is Queens. Everything we're naming is Queens. And you know, that's the dopest thing about that. All right, so you got Infamous for Queens. What's your favorite though? No, my favorite is, is my, um, Tribe Midnight Marauders. I mean, they on my wall, all right. on my wall. But if, like I said, to the quintessential Queens, you know that, coming from atlanta we knew new york through videos and stuff and so that's the like the snapshot if i thought of queen i mean well that side of queen queen right, no, side, you know um because tribe is, is the houses and stuff <laughs> and, and mob deep is queen's bridge so yeah those are the two that i would pick all right no doubt hey what you got bro damn so burn kind of got mine to to represent one but um you know, if I want to throw another one out there, I'll probably go with Mama Said Knock You Out, LL Cool J, um, his big comeback album. And, you know, I think, you know, for um, for like for my generation, like, you know, I didn't I, I wasn't old enough to completely appreciate his prime, like his early prime, like what he was doing, you know, during like 86 or when, when, when he dropped 85, 86, he dropped 85. 85 right, right. Yeah. so i mean i was only five i wasn't but you know mama said knock you out man hell yeah um so so i think that's a very dope way to represent queens and you know my favorite is going to be my favorite that's midnight marauders you know same as Vern. but yo my favorite is my favorite i can't pick a second favorite yo right but <laughs> you already you already know man representing tribe man that that's an album i could play any any time you know and and, and still feel that, that that joy you know yeah all right, no doubt, no doubt. Porsche, we in the BX. What, what, what are you picking for the Bronx? Okay, for the Bronx, I think a, like, sort of the representation would be Big Pun, um, Capital Punishment. But you guys know how I feel about that album. I yeah. I think you should take 11 skits off of there so that it's, like, digestible because um, it's exhaustive with the with the track list. But I love Pun, and I, I do like that album, but I just think it's a little bit too many skits in it um but i do think that that's a good representation of the bronx um i think pun did i mean wh while we had pun he was repping bronx so hard um and really putting it on the map even though you would say that it was on the map um it's almost like he re-popularized it in a way um with just you know how all over the place he was um he was doing collabs with like joe and you know fat joe and all these things so yeah um big pun is definitely a representation of the bronx but my favorite album out of the bronx is going to come from slick rick so um i love slick rick i i love his storytelling i love his you know intonation um the delivery is very unique um i think you guys know i i love the unique delivery and the flow um and of course the the storytelling is just brilliant so for me um great adventures of slick rick is my favorite mm. All right, no doubt, no doubt. Amir, what you got out the BX, man? I want you to get this up and just put me on the side of the phone on some of these records. I got a, as a disclaimer. So don't hit me up if I don't know the records. Right. I will say this. Jealous One still. Yeah. The, the production on that, it was a joint on there, I remember. Um, Drugs is the key to success. Guns in the means. Yeah. That shit. Primo remix. To me, that joint. I'm keeping a buck. At one point, at one point, was top three in the BX, and because of my proximity to BX, I saw that shit on the road. So, um, I'm gonna give Jealous One still envy. I don't think he ever made an album that was tougher than that. Yeah, yeah. Personally. Yeah. Yeah. Never was, that, was never that close to the concrete ever again in the career, in my opinion, which is subjective. Right. Um, right. Now, if I'm going to talk about a pillar album from the Bronx that I cut on every record, but I know one song that when I heard it, I, my sister put me onto it after years, after, and I went and wrote down the lyrics, was a uh, KRS One thing from my island. Yeah. Nice. It was the first fact that I saw where I wanted to dress like a drug dealer. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> right. I'm gonna keep it to the box. Nah. Certain rappers, I thought of them, I'm like, fuck that, that's the kind of shit, I need to dress like a drug dealer, this is what happened. <laughs> I remember somebody in the video had on this leather jacket with this mint reeds, man. That was the first time I seen them shits in the video. The Jordan, and he yeah. had the long he print. The, yeah, he had the, 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 uh, the Jordan 3s on. I thought it was crazy. And I remember this kid by the project. Do name had them shits on, and, I, and I, it just mentally scarred me. Certain outfits, I'm like, oh, now nah, I got to be like this. I need to understand what's happening. I'm full of criminal in that album, so I went back and checked the whole album. Incredible, but I'm gonna give Jealous One still envy because I can, I was closer to that, right? So, and and, and listening to it because I see those shit live and in the flesh. So, that's my two picks from the Bronx. Right. The crazy thing about Jealous One still envy, we did a show about. MCs who stepped their, their rap game up and Joe stepped his game up big time on that to go from the first Fat Joe album to Jealous One Still Envy like that was that's one of them to me like them Fife from uh, People's Instinctives the Low End Theory that's one of those Malik B's from Do You Want More to Illadelf where you just step your your pin game up incredible um, so yeah Jealous One Still Envy is dope my favorite and what reps the Bronx for me is criminal minded right there. I mean, South Bronx. I mean, there's no way in the world that I can even think about the Bronx without thinking about KRS, the Bridge Wars. Every, I mean, it's called Boogie Down Productions, the Boogie Down Bronx. Like, you know, this is 86 from 12. Like I said, this is probably the album I probably played the most out of any album of any genre ever from breaking t tapes popped in the vinyl scratch. This is probably my third CD of this. Like, this is probably uh, the album I played the most. So, this is what's gonna represent the BX for me and also be my favorite album out to FBX. Wreck, what you got for the Bronx, man? Uh, so for if I'm repping the Bronx, I'm going with um, I'm going with uh, I was gonna say somebody else. I'm going with KRS One, man. Um, Return to the Boom Bap. Mm. I'm going with Return to the Boom Bap. Uh, what was that? Sophomore year of high school, man. We used to run down the hallway. Yeah, it's like '93. Uh, going yeah, going crazy with that joint. But so I mean, that album was was crazy for me. Um, there may be what one skip on that joint. Uh, and that's really it. I, I think him and Primo did a good job as far as just collaboration. And you know, I, I'm I wish we would have got another album from those two around that time period. But you know, things happen. If I'm picking an album that's gonna uh, like that's my favorite though, Beat Nuts, Toxicated uh, Demons EP. Well, you know, they out of Queens. They out of Queens. Yeah, they from Queens. They are from Queens. They are from Queens. But they had they had they had they had they had a heavy Bronx presence. He was in the city, you knew. <laughs> yeah. Even though they rep yeah. Corona. Yes, they rep Corona. But they was in the Bronx. Queens, they, had, they had a heavy Bronx presence. I'm still I'm, I'm still I'm still sticking right. with you. No matter what. I'm still All sticking right. with you. Yeah, I would agree. Alright, Burn, what you got out of out, uh, out the BX, man. Alright, to represent the Bronx, I'm going criminal minded. It's, you know, enough said. Um, my favorite out of the, uh, the Bronx is by all means necessary. Yeah. It br brings back great memories. My my first car. <laughs> um, that that whole album, man. And part time suckers. I remember my, my mother. We was driving to Gary, and she was clowning the way he was rhyming. <laughs> <laughs> on that, and I, and I oh yeah, one of the first the times album I, alone, the album yeah. cover alone was crazy, man. Yeah, one of the first times I, I got mad at my mother, like, man, shut up, you don't know nothing about no rap, I'm trying to clown Karis one, but uh, yeah, by all means necessary. He, he had a couple of songs on there that he could have left off, like nervous, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I was listening to it today, so yes, that's that song, that album is still, still very dope. And bro, just this insert right there with them with the BDP, the ill Dapper Dan, Dapper love Dan, the joints yeah. and everything. Like this dude can't rest straight. Yo, crazy man, crazy joke, joke. I'm a, uh, I'm Eddie, what you the buck? He should, he should. What you say, man? Dude, he should those shirts as merch on sweatshirts. The BDP joint. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, this joint will be. For people who ain't never seen it, look at that. That's that's crazy. Yeah. With, with Scott LaRock Jr. in the middle with the gold rope on. Like, that's crazy right there. Um, yeah, that's dope. 
Eddie, what you got for uh, the BX? Yeah, man, I don't, in my mind, I don't think there's an album that represents the Bronx better than uh, Criminal Minded, just to me. You know what I mean? Like, you, you just think of the songs that's on there, South Bronx, Brazil, mm -hmm. all that. Um, and, you know, KRS-One himself, you know, just the embodiment of that. But um, a, a personal favorite um, that hasn't been mentioned has to be Don Cartagena um, by Fat Joe. And, you know, I just love that album. And uh, par partially Fat Joe, I think Fat Joe um, had a very dope performance, but a lot of it was Big Pun, you know, Big Pun's presence on that album and the way him and Fat Joe uh, played against each other and, you know, uh, uh, you know, all the features as well. But, um, you know, I love the production on that. Uh, I, I love, you know, Pun and, and Fat Joe playing against each other. You know, I just thought it was really dope. All right, no doubt. We going out to Long Island, Porsche, mm. L.I., Reps L.I., and then what's your favorite? Um, I got Public Enemy. Um, it takes a nation of millions to hold us back. And that's my favorite. And I think that's the um, being one. Like, I think it's all of it. Um, that is, to me, the best album, um, in my opinion. I think it's the most important album in hip hop, um, in my opinion. Um, and it's just strictly subject matter, um, energy. It's just a lot of um, shedding a lot of light at the time on socioeconomic problems that is still relevant. Um, this is it, this kind of checks the box on everything. So it's timeless. It's a classic. It's relevant. It was relevant then. It's relevant now. Like it's just everything that you want in an album. And I think um, it just doesn't get better than that. And and it's so incredibly important that hip hop has this sort of as a time capsule um, forever and ever, like, thankfully. Um, so for me, that's my favorite. And I also think it's the um, one that reps it the best, so. All right, no doubt. Amir, what you got for L.I.? Y'all gonna roast me, man. I got Keith Murray, most beautiful thing in the world, man. Wow. Shit, I think nice. for the that's representative, I mean, here you go. Mm -hmm. I don't know any other rapper out of Central Iceland. So, well, no, k was for man. So, but yeah, now nah, that's a dope pick. I ain't mad at Keith Murray joint. Yo, yeah, Keith Murray was one, rapping I, I, his ass off on that, man. You mythological niggas is comical. <laughs> yeah. And then the thing is, 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 for a lot of people who may not know, if you wasn't around then, nobody was rapping like that. No. Like, I remember when I first heard the most beautiful thing. You know what I mean? And it was like, <laughs> Yo, he's on the Lexus. It's like, yo, nobody is rapping like he. You know what I mean? So nah, that that's that's Long Island all day, bro. I think I think for me it was um, the kid I was I was signed by the wordplay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if I used to write those raps down. I, my mother, I used to get in trouble for writing because I, I was just trying to understand. I wrote the lyrics down. I, I'm trying to see what happened. Keith Murray, that, and then he. He was dreamy, but he was still fly. Like he, you Ryan, he, the first person I seen, the video was from behind the ass. I think I was bugged out. That's gritty. That's a, it's crazy to me. He scarred me. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Keith, Keith was a wild was dude. Smart, wild dude. Razor blade shit. Oh, he was bumped out. Yeah. I was just about to say the razor blade under the tongue and everything in the video was like, yo, this nigga, wow, man. Yo, crazy quick Keith Murray story. <laughs> I'm eight 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 nine. Uh, most beautifulest thing just came out. Friday he's supposed to be in the studio. We supposed to interview him. It's five o'clock. Production studio was booked. Everybody like, yo, who the fuck? Now Keith is up here with his girl. Now I'm from Philly. When when a nigga got his girl with you, this the perfect time to try to play you in front of his girl. So niggas is like, yo, we gotta tell Keith we gotta wait a fucking hour. Who gonna tell this nigga? I'm like, fuck it, I'll tell him. Like, yo, Keith, like I'm thinking this nigga gonna wild out, throw shit, whatever. I'm like, yo, bro, the production studio woo woo is gonna be an hour. He was like, man, no problem. I can see a new source. And this nigga just kicked it with us for a whole hour, just yeah, you know I mean, after the interview was over, played some beats for him. He freestyled over my beats for like an hour, like 
this nigga was crazy fucking cool. And I always say that in the 90s, from doing 889 from 93 to 2000, all the rappers who you thought would be assholes was cool as shit. All the rappers you thought would be cool as shit were fucking assholes. You know what I mean? I'm dead ass. Like, all them, all them fucking Howard University fucking instant burning motherfuckers, they be the assholes, man. Like, you know what I mean? They the assholes, but these wild Brooklyn ghost and Ray came through. They shit. Like, all the niggas who you think would be like on some wild out shit coolest motherfuckers. <laughs> the motherfucking Howard That's University that. alumni motherfuckers, they was the ones that was always on some old bullshit, man. Um, <laughs> I don't, I'm just saying, they are. They are. That, whole, that whole incense burning, Howard University, Peace Guy, Peace love, love yeah. Yeah, all that shit. My they queen. Were um, <laughs> but yeah, that so Keith is a dope pick. What's your favorite joint out of LI? What's your favorite album out of LI? Um, see, I, I, I'm torn because was album guys EPMD? I'm not a. I don't know every record, so I'm, I'm feel like I'm fronting. But is EPMD from LA? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Strictly yeah. business, bro. Everything, everything out of EPMD. So it's part of. Okay, so I, w- I would have to go with as far as setting the tone for Long Island. My cousin, Yon. This is, but the thing about it, I'm learning about these guys after that time was whack. But I still had to go back and do bad research. EPMD's album that you got the chill shit out. Yeah. You know, whatever, it was just, they, they set the tone for Long Island Hip Hop and kind of made it like one of the six boroughs of New York City. Yep, true indeed, true indeed. Can't get mad at that. Uh, when I think of L.I., the first album that always comes to mind is Three Feet High and Rising, Daylight. You know what I mean? Again, this is just what I think of when I think of L.I. You know, this is, this is what I think of when I think of L.I., but I'm with Porsche. Uh, my favorite album is Takes a Nation of Millions. You know what I mean? Um, I just, for some reason, it doesn't, P.E. doesn't correlate with L.I. to me like that. Like, I don't know if Chuck didn't say it a lot, but it just, you know what I mean? Like, they're one of those groups that P.E. could have been from anywhere. They didn't, and I'm not trying to say they didn't rap That's L.I. True. That's not what I'm saying. That's true. I'm just saying right. that their message was so strong, they didn't, P.E. really, Chuck was a grown-ass man when <laughs> It Takes a Nation came out. Like, I'm 12, Chuck <laughs> like, like so, this, I don't even think Chuck is like okay, li 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 with Long so Island, where I got him wilding. Yeah, yeah, like he would say it, but it wasn't a a stamp. You know, it's almost like somebody said Dres is from Queens. And I was like, you know what? I never even knew where Dres was from. Like there are those groups that you just never know exactly where they're from. So, what are you saying, Amanda? Was Chuck? What's Chuck D from Philly? I heard he's from Philly, right? Nah, 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 nah. nah, nah Roosevelt, 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 Long Island, yeah. yeah. Roosevelt, Long Island with Eddie Murphy, the, the Murphy crew, all uh-huh. of them. They all went to high school together. So yeah, Chuck is straight out of LI, but he just didn't. It's not like on his chest like that. But uh, Rec, what you got up for LI, man? Uh, Dr. J's from Roosevelt, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, for Long Island, uh, business as usual, EPMD. Uh, to me, that's now you're their not best confused album. With the businesses, which one is that? That's, that's the third. That is that's, that's the third digger. album. That's no, nah, that's I'm mad hardcore rampage. Yeah. Man, yeah. Yeah. Jane yeah. three, Mr. Bozak. Yeah. I think Gold Digger yeah. is on that. Yeah, Gold Digger is uh, on that. I to me, that is their best overall album. Uh, you know, that, that's that's what I'm a, I'm a run with. But personal favorite, uh, what's the joint? Business never personal. That came out what ninety two. Yep, that was my freshman year at Morgan State. That's, prob- yep. that's probably my favorite. Yeah, that's probably my personal favorite. Probably got probably resonated with me the most. I've been a fan of EPMD since since I was ten, um, and still I'm a fan to this day. Um, I still don't think that they get enough roses. Uh, I would love a biopic or a movie or shit. I take a fucking book at this point because the story is crazy. Yeah. Um, but you know that's my pick as far as Long Island. One thing about EPMD, who I don't think they get enough credit for, they've always done a perfect job of setting their albums off. Yeah. When you put in Strictly Business and you hear Strictly Business, it's like, oh shit. You put on a second album and you hear fucking So What You're Saying, oh shit. You put in that third album and you hear I'm Mad, 
nigga. You put on the fourth album here coming from the boondocks, like them dudes yeah. always had the the you just hit play. It's almost like watching a movie and that first scene just gets you. You like, oh yeah. shit. They it's, understood a, it's, that. It's, it's, it's a science to that. And we're gonna talk about that with 21 grams they, in a minute. They, cause they, they definitely the 20, understood that. The 25th hour man had me hooked from the beginning. As soon as I hit play on 21 grams, I was hooked. So we're gonna talk about how that came together. Vern, uh, long out. Long now, I know this was hard for you because you hit me up about it. Yeah, man. Um, but but y'all helped me because y'all named some stuff, and I'm surprised nobody has said this one yet. So I'm gonna go. Um, when I think about Long Island, it's got to be daylight. You know, um, Amityville resident. Um, you know, Long Island. So, so many times they reference Long Island. Maybe the Jericho Turnpike Bandit. And it's funny when I finally went to uh, Long Island, and I knew somebody that lived on the Jericho Turnpike. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but my favorite album out of Long Island, Paid in Full. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I mean, see, painful. If, if it takes the nation wasn't there, it would have been painful. But it right. takes the nation is like the big joker. That shit kind of like trumps everything. And you but, don't let me add more to my number one. So no, we won't. We won't. We won't let you add. And, and, and here's the reason: what I did, I thought about the albums that I I listened to the most. Yeah. I mean, I still listen to Paid in Full I'm, on a regular basis. Nation of Million, I mean, it's on my wall, so you know how what I feel about it. But there's a certain mindset and a mood that I have to be in to, to listen to, to to that. So yeah, I'm gonna go with De La for representing Long Island, and then Pay the Fool as my favorite album off of Long Island. All right, Eddie, what you got for us, bro? Um, I, I think representing um gotta be epmd so i mean i'll just say any I, i'll say unfinished business you know the thing because i think basically all of their albums are getting named you know what i mean and, and and as they should because you could pick any one of those first four albums and represent yes. long island yes. you know to the fullest um personal favorite is tough. um i'm probably going uh stakes is high by mm. i had that yeah yeah man that yeah Stella. That's a stacked album, man. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Amir's like, damn, I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah, man. I There's mean, a lot of about that island, man. Yo, again, we do, we gonna go do another show about boroughs in the discographies coming out the, coming out each borough because people don't know that Long Island has some long discography. Yeah, yeah you man. know, what I mean? yes. there's yeah. a couple of boroughs that got heavy hitters, but they may have not it. It may have not have the discography may not be that long. You look at Daylight's discography, EPMD's discography, Eric B. and Rakim's discography, like Public Enemy's Public discography, Enemy. like yeah. bro, yeah. you talk about some heavy hitters coming out of there. Um, Grap would kill me if we don't talk about Upstate, if we're not okay. talking about Conkers, New Rochelle, Mount Vernon. Yeah. Grap would kill me. There's no way I could even post this show and right. talk and about Portia, Portia, Portia would kill you yeah Portia <laughs> would kill me first I was like, kill me you guys got know started. I'm like where no, cause, do yeah, I go so I can talk Portia. about Pete if Rock I didn't, like, if I didn't name Mount Vernon I'd be talking about Philly and you'd be like Troy and I'd be like but that's not <laughs> from Philly that's, that's not right, Mount like, I know, I know kill, but you didn't say Mount Vernon so Troy I'd be like and what about Atlanta Portia would be like Troy Pete Rock is still school so there's no way we can do this without talking about the Vernonville upstate New York Yonkers New Rochelle but it's Mount, Mount, Mount Vernon is not upstate I got it's not upstate for, for for all intents and purposes on this show, <laughs> so so we're no we because Vernon is above oh, the bronze, right? No, I, <laughs> Vernon is above so, 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 so the bronze. So the nine one four is above the bronze. It's not a borough. It's five. It's five boroughs to New York. We're going to get. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Mount Vernon. Mount Mount Vernon. You can be on one side of the street in the Bronx. Right. And you the can other cross side. the street and be in Mount Vernon. Yeah, Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon. Yonkers is like that. Mount Vernon is like that. That's why the yeah. proximity and the texture of the music believes that. Central Island, right? A part of Roosevelt in, Queen, in Long Island. You could be on like one side of the block. You could be in Queens. The next side of the block, you could be in Long Island. When we say upstate, upstate is past Happens East Bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. 
See, for me, you just want to clear it up on the hook. Right. Good good point. Point. I don't want to look at the hook and say, you ain't, they like, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't correct that. I'm like, all right, cool. I got to understand. No, 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 no. That's good. Point. That's good. Now, I will say this. Now, I don't know how it is in New York. In Philly, because I live in uptown Philly, and if you cross the street, you in Sheltonham. If a Sheltonham nigga tried to say he was from Philly, nah, nigga, you not from Philly. <laughs> Same thing out here in DMV. Granted. <laughs> you could be on one side of the street in New DC, the other side of the street in Maryland. Let a Maryland nigga try to say he from DC. Ma DC niggas don't even claim Kevin Durant. They like, that nigga ain't from DC. That nigga's from Maryland. <laughs> We don't even claim Kobe Bryant, maybe the greatest basketball player of all time. We be like, that nigga's not from Philly. He's from fucking Lower Mary. That shit is not the crib. So I understand what you're saying, because I've never been to the Vernon. So I didn't realize that it was that close in proximity. I thought you really was, was, was going up. I mean, so again, we could change that. So not upstate New York, but we just talking about New Rochelle, uh, Yonkers, and Mount Vernon. So. Thank you for clearing that up, Amir. Porsche, what do you got? I already know what you got, so it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. I wonder, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> you can just I don't tell care. you about it. You know what, for shits and giggles, Porsche, what is your favorite <laughs> album Listen, that's I out of be, Mount Vernon? Go I ahead, Porsche. If on an episode of 5B and you guys don't put up all these freaking roadblocks <laughs> for me to say Troy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Mech on the Soul Brother. Like, the end. CL, Pete and CL, that's what it is for me. I think that is, I mean, you added Yonkers in there. I can't just dismiss DMX, but I think it's just for me, um, it's going to be Pete and CL. That album is just perfect um, in, in every possible way. Um, CL, CL Smooth to me is, I was about to call him CL Rock. That's how <laughs> the chemistry is, okay? Like, <laughs> that, that's how dope their chemistry is. Um, I just think that album is the perfect, um, example of a producer and MC just meshing so well together. And not only did that um, happen on Mecca the Soul Brother, but it's also the main ingredient. So you just know that if Pete and CL just kept on going, they probably would have just knocked it out of the park. So for me, oh, it's yeah. Mecca and the Soul Brother, and of course it's Troy, and if I could do the Vince McMahon strut, <laughs> I would do it. Um, <laughs> screaming out Troy, that's just me, so that's the one. All right, no doubt. Amir, what, what is representing New Rochelle, Mount Vernon? I already know. I, I got to ask the question. It's like I'm just the game show host. I got to ask the question. Yeah, we're going to do the same thing with Amir. Hmm, I wonder what you're going right, to say. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, well, see, if we talk about Mount Vernon, we know what this is. You already know where my shit is going to lie at. We just, let's say, Mecca and the Soul Brother, period. Right? And outside Mount Vernon, if we're talking about New Rochelle, I'm going to say Brand Nubian because of what yeah. they represented. But as far as the two main group, I'm going to say, you know, my, uh, the big, big old, uh, you know, the dude, you know, the Jedi teacher, the training mates, you know, uh, Pete, man. People don't know that I met Pete through CL Smooth. Mm. A lot of people don't know that. He introduced me to, um, you know, I was on a dark side, and you know, he used to come see me. And uh, I was at the barber shop one day, and he like, oh, come to the joint, uh, to Urban Plaza. They was doing the show with Roots, and um, the rest was like, you know, over time, just history, just cut. You know, that was my first introduction to these guys, man. Uh, my cousin, all the cousin, but I'm going to say Mac and the Soul Brother because I use that as a point of reference. Um, for everything that I do with him, because there's nobody's voice to me that will ever sound better. Other people's voice to me sound good with Pete Rock production, and it's a story behind how they, how him and CL even link. But that marriage between voice texture and to and tonality and soundscape of his beats was, um, I mean, it's something that I strive for, but can only be a man in my stride to be and carve up my own space but those are the big bros and you know so i have two great examples of uh, musical um, excellence that i can you know i tap into to uh to, to learn from they both have taught me in my career that's dope that's dope, so that's I got dope. dope. wreck what you got for vernon the vernonville yonkers and uh <laughs> So in my, 
Am I picking one per? You picking one for those three? Shit, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> put, up, put on your thinking cap. It's like picking one. That's like picking yeah. one for like. I know, smoke. bro. That's the hard part, man. Hey, we, you ain't at no smorgasbord, man. You better. Yeah, right. We've been right. saying right. easy. Hey, look, hey. We gotta hey. make it harder. <laughs> Closed mouth don't get fed. I had to ask. <laughs> All right. So if I'm going for the album that I'm just going to introduce folks to, if I'm up that way, um, I already knew what Porsche was coming with. So I looked at a whole other situation. <laughs> <laughs> um, my issue is favorite and what am I giving? So I'm probably going to give the soul survivor p rock to somebody and say hey you need to listen to this as a, mm. you know what i'm saying as, as 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 the appetizer as the course i'm giving them new york's finest slept on mm. album very and slept I, on and it's a hardcore slept on album um that's that's my favorite that still gets replayed for me um but those are the two that i'm going with from a standpoint of favorite and what i'm giving to somebody to listen to for the 914 you know what, Rex? I gotta send you this article. This old remix magazine. I don't even know what year this is from. Damn, but <laughs> it's uh up in here. You got the Pete breaking down how we made. Uh, that's why you can't judge a book by the cover. Look at the cover. Oh, <laughs> hey, I, 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 I read. I read. So I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't have missed it. And this that's is him crazy. breaking down how he made New York's finest. All the gear he was using, <laughs> everything like that. People don't know Young Guru engineered that out for Pete. That's why it sounds like that. Young Guru engineered that. Yeah, send that uh, to me, please. You, what you got, on PDF or something? Nah, I'm scanning. Just PDF it to you. My, my God. You already know. Vern, what you got for, for uh, the, the Vernon bill? <laughs> All right. To, to, to represent the Vernon, I'm going the main ingredient. Mm -hmm. Um, That's Pete and CL and all their glory, bro. I mean, I'm. it's like... It's like I would I would liken it to um, Mecca and the Soul Brother is like senior year of high school. You know, you you got a little job, you got some money, you on the football team, but the main ingredient is second year of college, and you know, it's just splendid, man. But uh, my favorite, I gotta go with Blue Funk, bro. Yeah, yeah, very dope. Album. I mean, you got you got Primo, you got Pete, and you got Hev. Doing you this got thing. Tony Dofat. Tony Dofat. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Can't forget Tony Dofat. Got big, you know, a um, bunch of thinkers. It, yeah. And, and, and I love it. You know, we talked about this on the Hev episode. It was prophetic, man. At the end of that album, Hev said, when I'm over, when I'm done, when y'all don't want to listen to me no more, you're going to say that the nigga Heavy D was rough in his day. And we still saying yep. it, Hev. We still saying it, bro. So, yeah, I'm going blue funk. Can't get mad at that. Eddie, what you got? Yeah, man, I'm glad. I'm glad Vern mentioned Good Funk because, you know, I, I was going to mention it from general principle, you know, um, if he if he didn't mention it. But, um, you know, my, my favorite is Mecca and the Soul Brother. But to, to recommend, man, I, I'll probably go with uh, All Sold Out EP. It's it's a project that barely gets mentioned. But, you know, what I mean, you got I kind of the creators. Going on the creators <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Mecca and the Soul Brother, the song Mecca and the Soul Brother, the soul brother. The yeah, movie. yeah, and they got the remix of that on the vinyl of of uh, of uh, Mecca and the Soul Brother. So yeah, I mean, yeah, that 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 joint is dope, man. Every time, like, I got the CD, so every time I'm in the car, Gray wants me to throw that on. You know, my son that's is dope. six years old, and he's asking for that. That's dope. That's, that's dope. dope. That's dope. For me, when I think of Mount Vernon, I think of Living Large, Heavy D, because I remember when I copped that album back in 87, I'm in eighth grade, eighth grade, yeah, seventh grade, eighth grade, and I'm like, yo, what the hell is money earning Mount Vernon? You know what I mean? I had never heard of that before. And then when they did the video, the video just made it that much doper, because you got Salt and Pepper stopping at a gas station, like, yo, we trying to get to Mount Vernon. So that was the first time I heard of the Vernonville. But then just like uh, Porsche, I got to definitely go with the main ingredient as my favorite album out of the Vernonville. I feel like main ingredient, I mean, Mecca and the Soul Brother. I feel like Mecca and the Soul Brother main ingredient are, are similar to the argument of what's better, Low End or Midnight yeah. Marauders. Right? Yeah. 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 It, those yeah. are the two albums I've always heard for 20 plus years argued about the most. 
as which one is better. And I think that all four of them are five mics is just whichever one speaks to what, usually when I realize it'll be a memory. Like maybe this was your senior, like Burr said, the win was your senior year of high school. So it just holds a special place or whatever, whatever. But um, the Pete, the burning piece is perfect to go into our guest today, Amir. Bruh, you and Pete right now got my favorite album of 2021. Now, let's be clear. In 2021, there have already been like 894 albums released in the past seven months, bro. <laughs> like, there's a lot of heavy hitters. And for me personally, it's not even close. When I think Porsche sent me the link, or I, I, I heard it from Porsche, and I put it in, and I mean, bro, from, like I said, the first joint, the 25th hour, man, I was hooked. And anybody who knows me, bro, there's 19 songs on there. Y'all know my cap is like 12. I, I, I lose my fucking brain when I see 19. Bro, I listen to this album literally no cap every fucking day. You know what I mean? So first things first, bro, who's Amir? Like, I'm not going to hold you. I'm like, yo, who the fuck is Amir? Like, who's this Pete and Amir? Like, I, I've never heard of you. Tell us about Amir. Where you, you talked about AZ, you talked about CL introducing you and Pete. Tell us about you. What's your story? Oh, uh, man, listen, man, I almost got emotional, man. Listen, man, I'll tell you this, bro. I'm, um, I'm a man, man. I was, just, I was like the, 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 the guy that sat by the door, man, like, you know, for years, bro. Um, I met, um, I was born in the Rochelle, moved around Vernon. I lived in VA for a second, came back to New York, and um, been in my, I was in Mount Vernon for, like, years, bro. So, I'm a, you know, my family's from Jamaica. I'm one of... 22 kids by my father. My father on some roster shit. You know, he was wilding. Um, <laughs> so Mount Vernon's a very Mount Vernon's a, Mount Vernon's a very rich uh, 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 a Caribbean city. Everybody kind of knows each other. I lived on South 2nd and 5th and then I ended up moving to Hillside. Right? So when I moved to Hillside Avenue they had already been famous and popped off. I'm like, yeah, Langer, man. Like, I'm seeing him pull up to his mother's house Pete, you know, and shit like that, but I had known him through, I met everybody through, um, CL, and saw me at the barbershop, saw me come down, like I said, I ended up going to a show, I met Dio, he was managing AZ, from that point, you know, I kind of started looping around, but I was a kid, so, you know, it was, um, you talking about maybe 10, 11 years ago, and, uh, I, uh, I just, um, you know, you would if people paid attention. If people look back at pictures, you would see me in pictures with um probably with Eddie F. Have in the background. I was carrying Eddie F.'s records probably ten years ago. Um, as a kid, like Eddie would tell you that I didn't even know that Pete and CL was signed to Eddie F. on their on the main ingredient. So I didn't even know that he he signed them. Um, and uh, so I kind of learned the game from that route. So I met these guys, and I was in the military. Um. I was outside, you know, for lack of a better word, and um, and you know, I, you know, I'm just, I'm pretty much like a round away A man, you know, a typical round away guy, man. That, you know, um, got a lot of siblings, a lot of cousins, um, a lot of stories, um, um, different places, different people, who have a different lens on me. So, but like I said, man, if you want to talk about a man, like think about that dude. You be like, oh, I mean, like the dude that did some shit. You be like, oh, a man from down the street? That's him? That's who I would be in your neighborhood. A man from down the block? Right. Oh, shit. So that I like, you know, I, yeah, that's, I, that's, how, that's probably how people describe it. A man he was just around. He was around, and you know, um, and that's how things happen, man. So as far as my profile, man, it's there to me. Like, you know, uh, I ended up going to college, and I graduated school in 2016, 2015 from Fordham U. Um, you know, I did a, a degree in a, a, a computer science, master's in cyber uh, and then end up getting, I, I was fucking with Tommy Boy maybe seven, eight years ago, uh, maybe longer than that, I think. That was my first deal with Tommy Boy when a uh, Lopez signed me over there, and nothing really transpired out of the deal. Uh, me and my brother, um, my brother, um, Success Jay, he was um, running with the money team. It was a lot of things. I was just around shit. was trying to hustle. Nothing was really sticking, but I just stayed on course, man, whatever, you know, um, that meant. And, you know, you know, you lose team and you stay back, keep rocking, but I just stayed obedient, bro. 
obedient to my um, to that voice inside of me, man. Just kept. And then last year, I put out an EP called Till Tomorrow. And like three, four, like a week later, he hit me with like, yo, bro, do you want to come to True Soul? And you know, he knew me. We was already working and speaking and shit. And he was, I was like, yeah, nigga. And that's how I said it. So, yeah, nigga. <laughs> right, right, right. Now tell me this, bro. One of the things I love about it was it truly has that mixtape vibe to it. You know what I mean? The scratching. Yeah. Uh, God, man, I, I, I'm going to go into to five joints because... Porsche will tell you, we, yes, me and my little sis are the polar opposites. She listens to lyrics first, beat second. I'm the total opposite. I listen to beat first, lyrics like 19th. Like the beat, I'm a producer, so that's all I hear. <laughs> the thing that was dope about you is that there were so many quotables that I heard from you that I want to talk about in here because it's funny when you say like you the, you the around the way dude because I'm like, when I listen to this, I feel like you want to you're the type who could talk on different situations in different places you know what i mean because there's political yeah. stuff on this album there's joints for the shorties on this album like it's different it's not just all one one lane thing do you know what i mean so but tell me this man one of the things i love is just pete using different things like 2 a.m on lafayette using the same sample that tribe used for the chase and then instead of saying you on point tip it's like you and your bag a all the time pete like whose idea was that for it's just the, like we just gonna throw some samples on and we gonna do we just gotta have fun with it, it seemed like y'all had fun with this album how did that come together absolutely had super fun man so i mean the album you know it's pete bro like i mean you so the, <laughs> this is some funny shit so he first time the first beast give me give me a like, beat i went to the crib you know this is before i even sang to him he's like yo i'm gonna give you some beats come by the crib so i came by the crib and the whole time i'm not really understanding pete's recording process mm -hmm. and y'all tell me for this pete me 12 beats five years ago i picked one and just kept rapping don't judge me I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Right. I he said he said pick a beat. He sent me both joints. I guess that he had picked out an album then for me to work with him, but I only used one record and I was recording with the heat makers. Hmm. Long story. But always, you know, and um so now I understood his process. You know, he gave me eleven beats. When Pete gives you production, the beats are never like usually not fully done gives you like skeletons to, to us they would be done to him he's doing some other shit so i had to understand that process when he gave me the beats fuck it go rhyme to these shits give them back he said yo take your time i said nah i ain't taking my time i'll give these back to you in two weeks 17 19 days later i emailed him the record 11 records he said all right i'm gonna send you some more he sent me like start sending me two to three packs every once twice a week he was sending me two to five beats i did 23 records for um 21 grams the original name was 80 so oh boy i was like how are we not naming it that that shit sound crazy we're gonna do something you know we'll, we'll sit with it and um so the fun part of it was i realized he was doing the mr miyagi shit <laughs> those Let's keep it a buck. Those beats are not beats that I I will, would have normally pick from if you said anything I did prior. So this is Pete Rock, Dr. Dre. You know, you're talking about guys who are Mount Rushmore producers. And I had to really go back into student mode and understand the gravity of what happened, but still stay inside my bubble. Because he's looking at me like, little bro, A, because that's how he talked to me. It ain't crazy, but it's like your little bro. Come on, my nigga, I can do this shit. You know, it's tough love, but he 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 believed that you know my penmanship. So with that record, for that record particular, he gave me the beat. I end up calling, him, said, "Yo, could you send me a voice note and just say, um, I'm gonna send you the clip and you just send me your voice note back." So that was done over the phone. Him saying all the time, "Let's go." Wow. Yeah, so that was done over the phone. I told him that I did because, I, like you said, the sample was from that. I just tried to figure out something, a, a level of familiarity with that particular chorus and something that would match the text of his voice. Um, and I end up, he shot it back and I dumped it into Pro Tools and we went and we kept recording. But uh, so then the other record um, was just the last six on that B side. 
I had done 13 records. Pete's exact words to me was this. I said, yeah, we finished, man. He said, no, the hell we not. <laughs> he said, no, the hell we not. He said, Zach, he said, nigga, Zach was, nigga, where them other six records I gave you? And this is FaceTime, so I can't look at him and shit. And I'm like, like a different headlights, like, what you mean? I tried to play stuff, like, what you mean with six records? He said, nigga, he started naming the records off the top of his head. I said, all right, my bad. He said, nigga, you rhyme over all that shit. I give you something, you rhyme on this shit and send it back. <clears throat> Don't this rhyme on this shit. I got the rest. I felt this gravity come down on me, bro. <laughs> it was weighted. I said, oh shit, the pressure. And I ended up doing those last six records, six, six joints off of that album in 18 hours. The joint. Wow. And, um, and he um he hit me back. He said, he, he said, you, you did all this last night? I didn't even go to sleep, bro. I stayed up for 22 hours, like 19, 20 hours. Make sure I got him back the records because I felt like we was approaching the deadline. I didn't know it was the deadline, but in my head, I'm like, you don't want to lose the opportunity. This is Pete Rock. You from the same time, he has a talk. He hasn't even dealt with an artist from here in 20 years, so don't be that guy. Don't be that story. Right. Understand who you're dealing with. Understand, you know, the prestige of this. Understand weight of it. Understand the legacy that you're attached to. You know, the conversations that you have with Hab, Eddie, the D.O.s of the town, the Graps, you know, people that have watched me grow up. So it's like that's your little cousin, little boat, and, they, you know, I feel like they groom you indirectly, indirectly. So I was like, yo, I'm going to call guys this. And I'm like, yo, what, what Pete doing? He's like, yo, man, you better finish that shit. All right, so it was, it was a ton of fun, man. It was definitely some pressure. Definitely was pressure. Don't think. I, I was definitely under pressure recording that shit. But, um... It was fun because when I would complete the records, he would be like, see, I don't have so that. And that's how I felt to not drag it out. But it was it was definitely fun, for sure. That's dope. Precious that's dope. Like, and yeah. you and you feel it. Yeah. You feel it in the vibe of the mixtape. You feel that. And to me, that's one of the things that I love about it. I'm going to chop it up about a couple more cities, but then I got four songs that I want to talk to you about and a specific verse you got in each four, and you just kind of talk about where that came from. Okay. Porsche, we going to Jersey. What do you hear when you... Uh, oh, when hold on, Q. Oh, my you, left, you, you left one borough out in the New yeah. York. Oh, Staten? Yeah. Oh, you, left two. you left two boroughs out. What? Harlem? Manhattan and Staten Island. Manhattan. Well, 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 for 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 time consumption, I, I was gonna leave out Harlem. No disrespect Please. to anybody. My wife Please. is from Harlem. I'm not I'm not Please. trying to disrespect Harlem. Say but less. Porsche, what you got for for Staten Island? Of course, I've got <laughs> 36 Chambers for both my favorite and the representation of Staten Island. Um, I, yes, Obi only built for Cuban links is my favorite um, hip hop album of all time. But I think that 36 Chambers was the precursor to all of that so for me i i gotta give it to the og and thank god that there was no 50 floods that ruined the beat to um you know 36 chambers because we got it in its all of its glory um i love that album i've you guys know the story with my dad i like fought i like threatened to throw myself out of a car for that album um i love it i love everything about it so for me it's my favorite and it's um the one that reps Staten the most for me. So that's 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 what that's why I got you the, the rugs for people to wipe wipe the yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I tell people all the time, if you weren't willing to risk life and limb for hip hop, you don't love hip hop as much as I do. Not saying you don't love it, but you don't love it as much as I do. Porsche just said she was gonna throw herself out of a car. And I because the dad I swear would not to you, listen to I child. would have done it. I so that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you all don't love hip hop, but if you did not take a risk to get on punishment, getting kicked out the house, Rel done said he done stole his mother's car to go to a Biggie Smalls, <laughs> you know, record release party. If you did not do some shit to risk life and live for hip hop, you do not love this the way that I do. Amir, what you got out of Staten Island, my brother? You know, I'm the only book for digital links type, man. Right. But you probably picked that already. You saw that. You saw that. Uh, and I would go and you know I would go revert back to Thirty Six Chambers. I think I picked up on like the vibe of Staten Island from Ghost and Raid, man. Mm -hmm. Two of my favorites. And um, 
I mean, well, I don't have to explain. Y'all know what it is, man. That's it's, oh, it's sure. going to me. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You know, for me, both favorite and the thing that reps it the most for me is only built for Cuban links. Like I knew Wu was from Staten, but like like Amir just said, like yo, I mean, especially incarcerated Scarface is like doing incarcerated Scarface is can it be also simple and ice cream? I just felt like that was Staten Island, probably from the videos too. You know what I mean? When you see ice cream, when you see uh, cream, I mean, I know cream is off thirty six, but I meant um only uh. God, what did I just say? Can't be also. No, 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 ice cream. I'm I'm ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. This is just my representative. Let me, my, my brain is slipping. Right, what do you got for stat? Uh, if I'm giving somebody something to listen for stat, and I'm with y'all, man, I'm giving them only built. Um, I used to go out to stat and go hoop during high school, man. We used to go out to Stapleton. One of my homeboys was from Stapleton, so it was dope to be on that side of the city because most cats, unless you know people, you don't really go out there like that. Um, we had some fun out there. I can't, I can't, I can't say it wasn't nothing crazy. We, I met Chuck D that day, man. Hmm, met, met, Chuck, met Chuck D as a, as a kid, man. He was, he was, like you said, how you said Keith Murray was cool as fuck. Chuck D was like, he was everything you would hope he would be hmm. if you met him. And we was just kids. We was, we was teenagers. And he just, he went, came, watched us hoop. And then we had a talent show. Some of the cats that I play with, they, uh, they rapped at the time too. He sat there, chill, did, wasn't on no BS, gave Cass his manager's card. Like, he was regular, chill dude. Like, he wasn't Chuck D. Yeah. You know? To me, that's the dopest thing when you meet your heroes and they just as dope as you think they would be. Vern, what you got out of Staten? To represent Staten is 36 Chambers. But my favorite album out of Staten Island, you can't see it because of the light, but there you go. You don't see, see. see. Yeah. see Truth of Nature, bro. I love yeah, that album. Yeah. I, I, I still listen to that album regularly, man. Yeah, yeah. brings back great memories. So yeah, I'm going with the fruits of nature. What you got, rap? My favorite is uh Jizzle. Look what's up. That's Brooklyn. That's Brooklyn uh, for me. Uh, well, I mean it, I mean he represents hey it's the same with the same with the, with the beat nuts. I'll let us fly. That's all right, uh, good. Let, let him do that. Let him do that. It, 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 to me, that. it ain't where you from. It's where you at. Like Buster's Brooklyn, but all I know of Buster is Long Island. Long Island. Yeah. Yeah. So, but neither here nor there. Eddie, who you got for set? Yeah, I think uh, Thirty Six is the best representation, and uh, the, the favorite representing is uh, Cuban Links. I mean, my favorite Wu album is is Liquid Swords, but you know, I I look at it different. Because I, I feel like Jizzle represents Brooklyn, but that's neither here or there, or whatever. But yo, I, I'll go with Cuban Link. Because um, right. I, I feel like RZA, like production wise, is leveled up on that album. Like yeah. something fierce, man. All right, no doubt. Porsche, what you got for Jersey? Redman's What the Album. <laughs> um, I I love Redman. I've I have had Redman as part of my regular conversational like favorite MCs for as long as I could remember. Um, well, I guess since he debuted. Um, and it's just it's his personality. It's his delivery. It's his um, ability to not take himself too seriously and be silly and all that on on wax. And I I just think he's just so dope. Um, what the album for me because it's it's the first one um i just think that that, that one kind of stuck so for me uh red man is is jersey he that's just who i think of so i'm gonna go with what although i do have to say the first three albums like you cannot go wrong i think red man is one of the few in hip-hop who has had a solid three album run epmd is another so red man all right no doubt amir who you got out of jersey bro Told you. Ooh, mm. you know, mm. that yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. screams Jersey. Yeah. The Fuji screams Jersey. You know what I mean? That's dope. I'm like Porsche. I got Red Man with the album. This is fresh from the air. Morgan for me, 92. I mean, just so many, just everybody playing this song. Every car that rolled by, every Jeep that rolled by, every dorm you went into, everybody was playing this album nonstop. So, and to me, again, if you was outside at this time, nobody was rhyming like Red Man. Nobody. Nobody. Like off that 30 PMD album, that rec name, uh, what was it? Um, that was the joint where he was hitting them with hardcore. the syllables. Yeah, hardcore. Yeah, like hardcore. when I read that, it was just like, yo, what the fuck? And then I heard Blow Your Mind, and then it just kept on going. So definitely Jers, uh, Red Man for Jers. Rec, another New Jersey representative. What you picking for your hometown? Oh, man, Reggie Noble. <laughs> Come on, man. 
Reggie Noble uh, album is going to be There's a Dark Side. Nice. Uh, first album was crazy, but There's a Dark Side resonated a little bit more with me. I was in a different headspace. And then if I'm going to give somebody an album to listen to for Jersey, I'm probably going to pull something from Poor Righteous Teachers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull something from Poor Righteous Teachers. Um, just to give them a little bit different landscape. Let them know that we can get, we can come from, from a whole bunch of different places. That first PRT a five mic classic to me, man. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. Can't never go wrong with that. Vern, what you got out of Jersey? I'm going to go uh, Naughty by Nature if I want you to know Ooh. get a rep representation of Jersey. <laughs> um, and my, my favorite, I'm going to say All Hail the Queen, man. There you go. Can't never go wrong with Lie because that mm. thing was something yes. kind of crazy. Yes. I was schooling Nate a lot the other day because... You know, Vern, you know, being a father is like, yo, you some, I realize I've missed the mark on a lot of things with you. Cause she was like, Queen Latifah's a rapper. And I'm like, God damn, I suck. Like, <laughs> yes, Queen Latifah's a fucking rapper. For God's sake, she's not an actress. She's a rapper for herself. So I just keep that in the Like, like, Nay was really blown. Like, was she good? And I'm like, was she good? Like, oh, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> they go go upstairs in the studio. Meet me in the studio. And, and, and I, I, I'm going to teach you about Queen Latifah and what she did. Um, so don't pick. Hattie, what you got out of Jersey, man? I think uh, representation-wise, I'll probably go with Muddy Waters by, by Redman. And, uh, but personal favorite might be the score, man. I, I feel yeah. like I go back to that album a lot. I mean, yo, and, and, and even how they had... Um, What's the what, what, what's the group with Rod Digger and them? Um, oh, the Outsiders, outside, outside, you know, representing. Outside. Yep. Yeah. That's a great right. album, man. That's a great album. Yeah, yeah. And it's that it's to the test of time. Yeah. Like, listening to how how many mics and you know, ready or not, mm -hmm. all the joints still sound. Cowboy. Yeah. Now, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Cowboy is great. Porsche, we on my side of things. Philadelphia. What are you what what, what are you pulling? Philadelphia Half Life. Um, the yep. Roots. That's my favorite album in their entire discography. I actually stopped listening to The Roots shortly after that drop. You and I <laughs> um, both. If, if, if I'm being serious. Wow. And you and I it's, both. Honestly, I, I like that album more than any other because I feel like lyrically it was just a stronger album. Um, Concerto of the Desperado is my favorite song in the entire discography of The Roots. I absolutely love everything about it. Um, listen, like Black Thought and Malik B are just great um, together and they and they feed off of each other really well. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong with Illadelf. I think that was when they really showed a different range of their abilities rapping wise, um, especially Malik B. And I, yeah, I, I think Illadelf is just it for me. Um, it's my favorite. And to me, when I hear Philly, I immediately think of the roots um, and Tracy Lee, but the roots. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. you are a politician, boy. Yeah, you yeah are she, a ain't politician. she? Is she? She tried to slide <laughs> that one up in there too. Just oh, oh, man. Man. Tracy, but you know, just, 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 no, I absolutely love Tracy. Lee. I mention Tracy Lee all the time, but for me, like Philly, the roots, yes, like it's just it is what it is. So, all right, no doubt, man. What you got out of Philly, man? Right now. And I'm and it's not a time based answer. I'm going with Dreams and Nightmares, man. Matter of fact, I'm gonna keep it a buck. That championship album by Meek was crazy. I'm not I'm mad sorry. at that. It had to grow on me. It had to grow on me. It but but it eventually yeah, did right. grow on me. That I really you know and, and I had to go back home to really hear it. I had to really go back home. Cause when you were in, that played everywhere. When the Eagles won the chip, like yeah. that was everywhere. So it just took a while to grow on me because it was a lot of beat jacking that I couldn't get past in the beginning at first. It was like, you know, what's free? And I'm like, damn, y'all, y'all just really gun jack bid for what's beat. But putting all that stuff to the side, I totally agree with you. That's a very, very dope album. I wish Meek would just rap and not do shit else because every time oh. that nigga's trending, it's never for nothing positive. It's take, like, it, take his phone away. Yeah, like you have no <laughs> friends, my nigga. Somebody needs to get you oh, all social media yeah. like yesterday. I mean, yeah. That's to me, not being from Philly, when I think of Philly, when I drive into, if I'm in Philly now, the roots are one of my favorites. I would even, it's going to be between the roots and me. Because I think they yeah. represent that core, or what I've been sold is a core Philly. Right, right, right. Um, for me, 
I'm, I'm with the roots with Illadelph, man. This album right here, to me, I feel like the roots, and I've said this numerous times, that the roots discography kind of follows Tribe's discography for me. You know what I mean? People's Instinctives came out. I was like, this is cool. I like the Need Apple Bum. It was some shit, you know, but I'm not a fan. Same thing with the roots. They came out with Do You Want More. I was like, it's a little light in the ass for me, you know, proceed, silent treatment. I like the shit, Mellow My Man. But then when Low End Theory came out, it was like, this is what I'm talking about. When Illadel dropped, it was like, this is what the fuck I'm talking about. You know what I mean? And then they come on with Things Fall Apart, Tribe goes on with Things, uh, Midnight Marauders. And then just after that, I felt like it went downhill. Porsche, I think you brought a, gr a great point up. Thought and Malik B were the perfect combination. And I felt like after Things Fall Apart, Malik leaving the group, to me was the equivalent of like if, if Fife left yeah. after midnight. Like it just wasn't the same for me. You know what I mean? And because the Roots have such a long discography, you have Roots fans who have never even heard this out. You have Roots fans that started becoming Roots fans with How I Got Over. So yeah. they don't understand the importance of wow. Malik and um, those two together. And then I will probably say, um, I mean, if it's not Philadelphia, it's got to be to be coming because I don't know anybody who reps Philly more than Beanie Siegel. Like this nigga is the Broad Street bully. Yeah. Like <laughs> this nigga represents the essence. People don't know this about Philly. People in Philly wasn't feeling the roots. They were. They was like, yo, this shit's too soft. This live jazz shit. Like again, that's that Howard alumni incense dread crowd. Like. Philly, that's not Philly. Like, so Beans and State Property and Freeway, like, that was it. So when I think of a, a representative of the city, it's definitely the Broad Street Bully. To me, when this, when Prime Siegel could fuck with anybody. Prime Siegel has been on tracks with who people say are the best MC ever, and gave Jay work. You know what I mean? This nigga single-handedly battled Yonkers damn near by him, got by his damn self. You know what I mean? So Prime Siegel is a problem. So that's for me. Rec, what you got out of Philly, man? Uh, I'm going with the same the album. Uh, it was Half Life. Love the album. That joint was on many of trips back and forth from Jersey to Virginia during college. So that album sticks. That's the album I'm giving to people. Uh, favorite album, though? Philadelphia Freeway. Mm. Man, I, I don't think that album had a had a had a had a filler. <laughs> that joint is a banger from one to the end. Yeah, um, you still throw on what they do. I mean, not what they do. Um, even though what I they do. About it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You throw that on right now, bro. If People I'm, still. If I'm, Freeway could be performing that song till he's sixty-five. Yes, dog. Y'all, y'all remember the, I just the, the pick at the at the seventy-six at the game? Six, at the Sixers game. <laughs> yeah, the stadium. You know, yeah, the word, rapping the word for word. word. Yeah, it's, you know, and that's the, another thing about Free who represents the city. That was the first time a lot of people seen the Philly beer. You know what I mean? Like Jay said, yeah. gotta kill witnesses because free beard sticking out. Like niggas yeah. really didn't know about the beards yeah. until free like that. You know what I mean? So that's a very dope pick, uh Rap. Burn, what about you, bro? All right, I'm gonna go half life as my favorite. Um, but to represent Philly, that nigga freeway, man, it's just something about him, man. Um, like when, when I wanna spaz out, I put on line them up and get on my drums. Man, the heckling conscious like a school bus and wake early in the morning. Bruh, it's just an energy that, that Freeway exudes. And since, since Porsche stuck one in, I'm going to give a shout out to a time in my life. The Cross Movement, man. Ambassador and and um and, um Fanatic. Fanatic, them boys, yeah. Yeah, them boys came hard, man. You know, gospel rap, the Cross Movement. But back off my politician soapbox. Yeah. Freeway, <laughs> Freeway and Illa Delta half life. <laughs> All right. Hey, what about you? Damn, man. Um, represent. I'm kind of between that freeway and Illa Del Pathlight to represent. Um, you know you what? Know, man, uh, I gotta salute you because when you picked me up out in LA, I got in, I got in Eddie's car. He was like, "I got Illa Del Pathlight playing for you, bro." Like he, he came to scoop me. He came to scoop me from the airport with the soundtrack playing. Like, yo, I got I got this playing for you. That answers my question right there, man. I I picked that, so you know, Dad asked my question. That's what I chose to represent. I knew I had a uh, a Philly representer, you know what I mean, showing up. So I had to represent with Illadel. But y'all know my favorite Roots album is Things Fall Apart. 
that's that's one of my all time favorite albums. Five. You know, great album. Great it's, album. it's like it's you know, like Kill always says, it's it's like the um, Low End Theory and and Midnight Marauders things. I'm a Midnight Marauders guy, and I'm a, a, a Things Fall Apart guy. You know, I feel like those are the more to me the more complete as as far as you know production and um full out i mean yo it has got the bangers though i i can't even front now, like i said man it's like it's like low it's like low and at midnight like you can't go wrong yeah. with either one but ed you gotta cop this joint this is the 25th anniversary box set vinyl joint like this joint got it's like a 30 page booklet of just crazy stories of of the uh-huh. groups you know it's crazy man i got i got it on vinyl like actually my wife got me got got on vinyl for a gift she said she couldn't find the anniversary john at the time but it's like yo if there's any i got a cop twice you know, it might have to be this thing. <laughs> and anything for right here, all right, P, Malik B. Yeah. Me, this was the heart and soul of the roots. When you ask people ask me what's my favorite root song, it's no great pretender, which is yeah. crazy. It's Malik right. B. So all right, P, Malik B right there. People don't understand how important he was to the street credibility of the roots. Um, all right, let's go down to Burnstown, ATL. Porsche, what you got coming out of ATL? got to be Aquemini. Um, I, again, Outcast is to me um, just the full representation of Atlanta. Um, I, and Aquemini is my favorite album just off of everything, like from album art to the track list to just all of it. Um, I love ATLians too. Um, and Southern Playlistic, but to me, um, Aquemini also for nostalgic reasons, like I was in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I remember that one. Um, I, that's where I went to cop the joint. So, yeah, I mean, it's a Quemini for me. Um, Andre and, and Big Boy are just, they, they're also a very, very dope, um, you know, duo. Their chemistry is great. I am not with these people who think Andre is like this much better. I think they're both equally dope. Um, in their own way they, they bring yep. very different things to the table and it's only because yep. of their ability to mesh those two styles together that outcast is the way that they are um and so kind of exactly. um what's the word i'm looking for like they just sort of have such an imprint on hip-hop um and yep. you know like made made themselves last as long as they did so for me um Aquim and I is my favorite album out of atlanta and also a representation of atlanta Imagine if you had two, three stacks inside uh, an outcast, how how different that would be. Yeah. 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 Or two big boys. Like it would just be, yeah. yeah. You need need the yin and the yang. Yes, you do. Exactly. Exactly. Amir, who you got out in Atlanta, bro? Damn, she took it. And I was going to say that coming out because, because, because she lives in my lap alone. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. They had a lot of records on there that was just crazy, man, production wise. Um, and just that whole, I think the whole, they was like, I don't know, man. It, it, when I looked at them, they represent, I mean, aesthetically, they looked totally different. And they represented two, I think, aspects of Atlanta. But it showed you True. how, even though True. aesthetically we look different, we rep together, we make great music. Yeah. And I think that not only resonated with. Atlanta audience, I think it represented with everybody who had a weird friend that they was cool with mm-hmm. and they do cool mm-hmm. shit together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, I think that, I think that message that was was nonverbal, and I think that um, I, I would Great equate point. outcast. Yeah, Great outcast. Have, you, know, you know, sonically, I mean, it's just records alone. So yeah. yeah. When I think rapping, I don't. My fault. We said. And if I had to pick, you know, you said, uh, uh, I don't even know the name of Sai High's last album. No, it's called Power. Don't walk Sundays, man. Don't walk Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. Don't walk yeah. Sundays. Yeah. 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 No. Hey, hey, man. Hey, Would they let him, bro, they let him out, please? Would they let him out of jail or whatever he is? We need some Sai High, bro. Bro, yeah. let me explain something to you. 
No Dope on Sundays is a five mic album, period. Right. Back and forth. Yeah. We even did a show when I was like, if Sai is not the dopest MC right now, then who the fuck is? After I heard No Dope on Sundays, I was like, yo, I'm gonna just cut through all the bullshit. I know Royce, I know Conway. Yo, if Sai, yo, No Dope on Sundays, it, oh my God. You, yeah, you, you, you know what, Kill? I just had an epiphany. You know, Sci High, Sci High was was always like behind the scenes, right? You know, so I guess there was folks that was anticipating. Sci High did what J Elect, what, what we expected J Electronica to do. Sci High just came, you know, all these years and no album, dropped a, a, a five mic album, and you know, and and then he dipped, right? But yo, if if Jay Electronica would have given us that five mic album that where he shined, not Jay Z shining on most of it, like everyone would have been satisfied. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but yeah. Sci Fi definitely did that. Yo, a man, that's a great call with Sci Fi because goddamn, I love that album. <laughs> <laughs> that, thing, that thing is some kind of special. And the sad yeah, part yeah. is, people haven't heard it. People watching, if you've never heard No Good Boy Sunday, stop watching this right now and go watch <laughs> Like that, That's how good it is. Right. Yeah, uh, to represent ATL, I'm always gonna go with ATLians, nice. uh, just because I happen to be living in Atlanta when this dropped, and to be in Atlanta when this dropped. When I talked about every car was playing Red Man, let me explain to you: there was nothing else that drove by that was not playing this album. Plus, I've always loved Outkast artwork. Like, I mean, the, yeah. the vibe, I mean, just the artwork is just incredible. Um, on this stuff. Is, I mean, is that I always the vinyl, is, is that the vinyl you picked up in LA? No, no, no. This is the vinyl that uh, Ed blessed me with with the oh. gift card from Christmas. Oh, I nice. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, like Ford said, my favorite out of Atlanta is definitely going to be, you know, a criminal. One of my favorite albums of all time. Um, so that's it. Both things is just nobody represents the A better than me than Outkast. So, but that's just me. Rec, who you got for Atlanta? I'm a little, I'm a little different, man. Uh, representing Atlanta, I'm going with Southern Playlistic. Um, I, I think, the strip, I think the stripped down sound. Yeah, you know uh, what? That is a good pick. That that that, that, that is a good. That stripped down that initial. Is. That for me, yeah, I, I need like when I go down south, I need to hear somebody trunk rapping. You know what I'm saying? Like that for me represents that. But my favorite is uh, ATM. That, that's my favorite. Thank y'all. All right. <laughs> Burn, this is your city, man. What what reps you? You tell us what reps your city. The best <laughs> no, <part. no. laughs> All right, so my my, my my favorite Outcast album is right on my wall. Southern Playlistic, as as uh, uh vague. I mean vague. Rex said, man, on a, when it's when it's nice outside, I open the sunroof and put on Southern Playlistic, man. It's just a feeling, and then y'all already know my feelings about it. I went, we went to the dungeon before they were signed, and Rico was playing this song by this little group, and invited us to the um, the showcase with LA. So, but I'm gonna tell you what I would say uh, represents Atlanta in a whole different way. It's soul food, man. Um, Goody Mob, yeah. Goody Mob, bro. I mean, the, the the name references. It was a line at the beautiful, the beautiful restaurant. JJ's Rib Shack was packed too. Uh, you know, Bankhead Seafood, the Swiss Chapel Forest, uh, Wichita Drive, uh-huh. all those, all those things, man, is just just name checking Atlanta, man. So I mean, they're amalgamation. That's why we love the Dungeon Family because they they are us, bro. And so uh, I'm, I'm gonna go Southern Playlistic and Soul. Yeah, that's a dope uh-huh. thing, bro. I didn't know what a package store was till I came to Atlanta. I be listening to the package stores closed. Okay, my day is ruined, and I ain't even know what the hell that was until I moved to Atlanta. Eddie, what you got for ATL, man? Yeah, so to represent, um, to represent, I'm, I'm going with ATLians, man. I remember like first time me and my cousin heard Elevators, and it sounded like nothing we ever heard before. We're like, yo, what the hell is that? You know what I mean? And uh, we, we were like totally immersed. And then, you know, fast forward, you know, I, I told this story, I think on the last episode, but you know, uh, me me going into the Marines and being around people from all over. And, you know, it, it, it was Aquemini that, that, and Aquemini is my favorite, but but Aquemini, man. And, and that was that Scotty, Odie, dope 
Scotty <laughs> Odie dope. Like that Scody that Odie was dope. another one that sounded like nothing else I ever heard before. Yeah. And it it's outcast constantly <laughs> does that to me. Because <laughs> you know Bro, when, when, say, when nigga, <laughs> you can play that shit on the trunk. Man, I'm, please. I'm about to say, nigga. My yeah. wife will come in here and wrap this thing around my head, man. She sleep. <laughs> <laughs> outcast constantly, yo, co- constantly coming out with stuff I never heard because then when they came out with bombs over Baghdad, it was like the same kind of feeling, you know what I mean? So they they always innovating, man. Oh, oh can, can, can I please say, man, a, a popular podcast host keeps saying that bombs over Baghdad is a um a old to drum and bass from from um London. <laughs> man, would you please would you please stop with that, sir? <laughs> um, I, I understand. I, would I you know. would you please, man? That's an old to eight oh eight Miami bass. Atlanta yeah. booty shake stuff, man. Stop with that stuff. Okay, my bad. <laughs> All right, back to the okay. mirror for a second, yo. I want to talk about some of these bars. So you got a joint on here called Bully Rap, right? And your line is yes, the, econ- the economy be robbing me since I've been paying taxes, looking at my check like, damn, I'm only getting paid a fraction. To make matters worse, I'm supposed to save a portion of it and thinking to myself, how do I stash on a budget? Then at the end of the rhyme, you got a skit. With a bill collector calling, like you know, COVID, your COVID extension is, is going away. Like yo, call us back. And then at the end of the skit, he's even like, yo, I hate this shit. I gotta find another job. Where did that come from? Because, bro, I'm gonna tell you this, bro. At 47, I love hip hop that I can relate to. Mm-hmm. I've had many conversations with student loan bill collectors over the years. To the point that I laugh at them niggas. I'm like, oh, I know you're doing your job, nigga. We both doing our job, like. Yo, yo, bro, you know what this shit is like? Bro, you know what this shit is like? It's literally like that time that Pooh and Bodie saw a car yeah. at the movie theater and was like, yo, hey, yo, y'all go to the movies too? Oh, you know, this is what we gonna do. We sell drugs, they chase us. I'm like, man, I get it. You gotta call me to find out why I'm not paying my school loans. I'm gonna tell you some bullshit about why I'm not paying my school loans. Like, and, I, and you know, I be having to cracking up because i'm like bro i can't pay you could threaten me whatever the fuck you <laughs> desire like whatever you want to bad credit cool no problem just so all i had to just say bro that you know thankfully I'm, I'm i'm not in that position anymore but i understood that what made you come up with those bars to kind of touch on because that's that's the hip-hop that i want to hear at 47. i want to hear hip-hop where i feel that this economy is robbing me since i've been paying taxes looking at my check like damn i'm only getting paid a fraction where did that where, where, what spoke to you like that to, to write that it still sounds crazy man gas p i don't write man i i, I just do bar them maybe two to four bars two to four bar sprints mm. so i think with um him sometimes i do six to eight i may get lucky and get an eight bar sprint out of a you know but i haven't written the rhyme down in like five years um, so everything you heard on 19, I mean 21 grams, I didn't write any of it. I wrote it, but I didn't write it like to paper. I recorded it, like, it, it, uh, I guess with one stream of consciousness is what they would call it. Um, and uh, in that moment, I was trying to the beat, um, you know, P, if you obscure, but uh, abstract, beautiful soundscapes. To, 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 and he always tell me to figure it out. He says, I know this beat is crazy. You got to figure it out. So that was one of the moments I had to sit and with the beat and figure this shit out. So I think, and I got my friend to do the skit about collecting the bill during okay. COVID because I was on the news seeing that. And it was like a, um, my man Skeet from Boston, John Skeet. And he, um, I was like, yo, um, economy fucked up. Just gonna and then I'm looking at Vice TV. Um, and I was just trying to speak from a place of where we were at as a, uh, as a, as a, a everyday U.S. citizen. Like, um, a lot of people lost their jobs. So damn, I'm only getting, you get robbed in taxes. We know the taxation shit is crazy. Um, and then they tax when they give you taxes. And then there was this whole spill about, you know, why we even paying taxes. And it's the whole shit about, you know, you get... I, so I, I broke down the math. I said, fuck, man, if you're working 12 months out of a year, you work four months out of a year to pay taxes. So you're giving your company four months out of your life free to technically pay taxes. 
So I'm working the 12 months, six, seven, when I'm almost four and a half, five months for free. That's crazy. Yeah. I said, damn, that's whack. So I guess that bar from the sub, I guess, from the kind of, I don't know, man, I just talking my shit. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it landed. I guess it landed. And I, I'm just thankful, you know. Yeah, but it man, definitely, I was, I was speaking from that. I was speaking from that energy, I should say. Right. All right. Another yeah. joint. Ultra gravity. You got to listen, Donald. Uh -huh. Ain't got no time to play these politics. Listen, Donald. The whole damn world know you incompetent. Of course, speaking on Donald okay. Trump. Where did that? Where did that come from? Watching the news and shit, man. Now, man, I was watching. Well, you know I what? That's a good point. That's a good point. For MCs listening, maybe that's what y'all should do. Try watching the fucking news every now and then, <laughs> and maybe it will be something different to rap about. Or read God a book. Man. Yeah, God forbid, read a book, watch the news, and give it'll give you some more ideas. I'm sorry, man. Finish what you uh, were going with. That. Nah, that's, that's, I, those are two of my resources, man. My two places, you know, order books. I mean, I read the whole shit. But I definitely got a ton of books, and um, I like watching documentaries and news and shit and History Channel type shit. I, I'm very big and almost like a history buff, but I'm not like a historian of sorts. But I definitely, I'm definitely into that type of shit. You know, I like dark science. I like the shit that you're not supposed to know, but it sounds cool know it. And I like, you know, whatever. So I think with the Donald line itself, around that time, um... You know, it was around election season. He was doing all of his fuckery. And I'm like, no, the news, you know, this and I'm like, listen, man, come on. Everybody knows you're incompetent. You know what I'm saying? You fucked this whole shit up. Not all of it. Some of it was fucked up before you got here with false politics. I'm like, you know, we, I know that, but, and I just spoke to it in the moment. I allowed the energy to just pass through me, bro. All right. I have a very, um, I have a, uh, I guess a way of, uh, my my particular uh, stance or posture with it with music is that um, when I say things, I'm I'm never bigger. I, I come to the realization as an artist, you're never bigger than message. You're just messenger. And right. at the point you think you're bigger than the shit you're saying, there's no room for growth anymore. You won't get blessed with new ideas. If I try to stay behind the message or the lyric, not in front of it. So yeah, that's dope. That's dope. The next one I got, no justice, no peace. You say, we trading stocks, but not the kind on Wall Street. Black is the new orange, broke is the new boring. I pray for days where status is not important. Then only say, shine your light on the world, the good book. Never put swine before the pearls. So I think that stood out for me because you're dipping and diving through so many things. You're talking about the stocks, but not the kind on Wall Street. Black is the new orange, broke is the new boring. What, what, I think the reason that line spoke to me is just because, you know, it, 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 and here's a great example. Somebody, poor, somebody just tagged us today in the thing about a uh, lazy bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony saying something about the Migos, like, let's battle. And the boy from Migos was like, let's battle with a, with a money roll or whatever. He's like, see, that's y'all motherfuckers' problem, nigga. It ain't, it ain't about money. It ain't, that ain't the battle. The battle is the skills. You know what I mean? So that made me think of that because it's just like, you know, broke is the new boring. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, don't nobody want to be broke. So like, you know, we always got to um, put this facade on, on social media. And then I love how you tied into the next line. I pray for the days where status is not important because that's why people are acting like they're not broke on the timeline because they want the status. Um, and then I love the whole Umi shine a light on the world, the good book, never put swine before the pearls, which is one of my favorite scriptures. Where did that line come from? And how did you enter you got Blacks New Arts from Netflix. You got this from over here. You you quoting out the Bible. Where did you, how did you tie all four of those things together like that? Man, I'd be lying to you if I told you I know. I just, <laughs> I'm not a, I don't have, I don't have a, a you know, an instant burning or weed uh, enhanced answer for you. I will say that it's just, like I said, man, you allow to be used by the energy in the room, bro, and just right. go with it. And, well, know, let I me just say this, bro. Pull, your, en your, your energy is dope because it is definitely, again, like I said about me and Porsche, I listen to the rock, especially with a Pete Rock project. I'm listening to whatever the rapper is 
the eighth, ninth, tenth thing, because I'm just paying attention to the beat. So it's a testament to how dope you are that the lines are speaking to me very easily. Like, you know, and I'm able to pour, like, as soon as you said you would do the show, I'm like, oh, bet, I need to ask about this line and this line and, and this line and how this came together. And I just love hearing about the process because I've been working with MCs for years and I don't think I've ever heard that kind of process where you do two to four bars at a time. Like, that's something totally new. But the shit works, yeah. obviously. You know what I mean? So yeah. The trick is, the trick is, um, the, tr the trick is, um, I don't want to give too many of my secrets away. But if you listen, yeah, don't tell like, the secret. Don't, don't don't tell them the secret to the salmon sauce. Like let's no, but, don't give yeah, them the secret. But, 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 I, but I, I say I, I say this though, man. It's just honestly just having fun and being present and allowing yourself to be used by your own. The energy of your life story, bro. Like, like, I mean, most of the stuff that I'm able to regurgitate, I came into contact with it at some point, right? Um, so I think with the, 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 the never throw um, swine before the pearls is definitely scripture. It, and people know what that means. You don't put. I take it as my um, particular um, <clears throat> interpretation of that. Don't put your good energy and where I try to put it, good energy before things that's not going to serve you back it's just it's just ridiculous to do that so never do never put swine before my, my omi says shine your light on the world most deaf i'm one of my favorite records so i pulled from that energy not i hate i'm not super spiritual but this ain't what i was thinking so i, I took that line and i just kind of disconnected and it just omi my omi says that one of the flyest non-singing singing records of all time to me mm -hmm. like the motherfucker was it made the Jordan, it made the Jordan commercial hot, a hotter. It was like I couldn't believe he sung this shit, and it's just fire. So I yeah. said, you, you know, and I just connected it. And I guess if I had to really think about it, you know, most of us. I mean, I, my grandmother and you know my mother, they, they're spiritual people. Like, you know, my only says shine light on the world, a good book. And I thought about her because she always quote me Bibles, Bible scriptures. So I would just, I guess, the connection would be between my grandmother and her Bible quotes. And I kind of put together, I guess I was ringing like that, yeah. All right, no doubt, no doubt. Am I like, oh, go ahead, Vern. I, I can see how, why that is dope that you do it in four bar excerpts, because it doesn't tie you in as much. It, it keeps you free to, to you know what I'm yeah. saying, add, add dopeness to it. That is very dope, man. And the last joint, the last joint oh, I got. Wow is a joint you got called the Google. You got Black Fist in the Sky so we can settle scores because I wasn't thought about when you was making laws. My destiny manifested. Gotta know the past so you can understand the present. Rights were never civil. Told Brian to dribble. Put us on the news like we the monkey in the middle. Like, that line right there, I love that flow. Oh, Rights were never civil. Told Brian to dribble. Put us in the news like we the monkey in the middle. Like, again, I'm not gonna ask where it came from, but just to salute you, bro. Like, again, for me being a producer who don't really listen to the rappers till later on, especially with a nigga like Pete, this is a huge test. Like, this is a very, very dope, very dope album, bro. I know it's technically yeah. a mixtape, but I, 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 I album. play this. Yeah. yeah, I play this like an yeah. album, and God forbid, better. I listen to better three, four, five, six times a day. I love that joint. I told my young boy, this is how you incorporate boom bap with some with, with the auto tune dude singing the hook. Like this is the meshing of how you can mesh the old and the new. This is the right way how to do that. Cause I absolutely love better. Like I listen to that all the all the it's crazy because better is the reason why we did the show a couple of weeks ago when we was talking about what artists from a decade can make music for another decade. Because I was listening to better, thought of Shaka Khan put on Shaka. Shaka had me thinking, okay, Shaka was popping in the 70s, she was popping in the 80s, why wasn't other artists? So just to say, man, it's an incredible album. Vern, I know you and Eddie got a question. What you got, Vern? Yeah. Did you say put us in a noose or put us in the news like a monkey in the middle? Uh, no, put us on the news. News, okay, all right, all right. Cause that could have been a double. All right, yeah, that's dope, bro. Yeah, so, uh, Eddie, no, I just, uh, I just wanted to salute the project, like, um, for me, like my first time listening to it, and I think maybe it was a little bit of a Jedi mind trick because, you know, it's kind of promoted as the mixtape, right? And so I'm, I'm listening to it, the songs are shorter, and so I, I didn't really think of it as an album, and now I listened to it again today, and just 
all of the different subject matter that you cover, you know, all of the, you know, like you talk about your stream of thoughts, talk about politics, talk about, you know, things going on, you know, with, with, with you and, you know, different stuff. Like you're covering so much and, and it, it seems like a theme throughout it. So for me, it definitely is an album. And, and that's kind of a realization I just came through today. Like, you know, um, and, and that was initially why I, I kind of compartmentalized projects in my mind. Like, all right, this is a mixtape I put here, but definitely an album and definitely very, very dope, man. So, salute, salute to you and Pete. Damn, all right, Porsche, I know you gotta get ready to roll, right? I got to get ready to go, but I just want to say one thing to Amir. I know in the last part when you were talking about the out al- the, the mixtape or album, um, you said that, you know, you felt the pressure working with Pete Rock. And on our show, when we yeah. talked about the um, our favorite albums, obviously this one, one of, was one of mine as the number one shared spot with Sky Zoo's joint. Um, and in that episode, I said that I, I feel like Pete Rock has his ear to the street. Like he always... He, he's never going to partner yep. with someone who will, you know, kind of not do himself or his beats justice. And I think, I think like that pressure is probably really good because it brings out the best in the MC. But I also think that, I mean, it's a testament to you because I don't think Pete Rock would have reached out if you didn't have the capability to kind of take his beats to where they need to go. So I know we talk about, you know, CL um, and Pete Rock being like the ultimate chemistry um, team producer, but I don't think you're you're that far off. Um, I think like again, Pete Rock's one of my favorite producer of all time, um, and I just think that he seems to know exactly who to work with, so that it kind of highlights them and highlights him. And I think that this was just an absolutely perfect representation of the chemistry. So again, like everyone said, salute to you. Thank you for your, I know MCs are always thanking us for, for the feedback, but like, thank you for your art. So I always tell them, I'm like, don't thank me, thank you. Um, so I appreciate it. And hopefully there will be many more projects from you. So that's all, and then I'll, I'll we leave. Got, so. got thank you. That's what that's what I want to get into before we did this. Mm-hmm. Let's go through the rest of these cities real quick. <laughs> Texas, okay, bye, guys. Rec, what do you I right, Porsche next week, sis? Yeah, yeah. Rec, what are you right. hearing out of Texas? You was out in Houston for years. If you gotta give somebody to represent Texas, I, I didn't want to go Dallas, all that stuff, just the state, Texas. What you got? I'm going to the hometown, man. Third Ward, Scarface. <laughs> Fix. Okay. Fix. That's where I'm going. All right. No that's probably not out. that's probably not a real representation from somebody that's from Houston. Uh that's gonna be my second home, but, but I, that's for me. That's what I'm going with. All right. Vern, what you got from out of Houston? I mean All out right. of Texas. Out of Texas, I'm finna see if I can sneak this in. If I can't, y'all call the flag. Go, go ahead, go ahead and throw the spade out there. Go ahead and cut. I, I know you are I know you I know I know you reneging, but go ahead. What you got? The DOC is from Texas. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> he is. Hey. Yes, he is. Technicality. I can't say, I can't say nothing. So with yeah. that being said, <laughs> no one can do it better. <laughs> all right. All right. No doubt. No doubt. That's a good one. That's a good one. Eddie, what you got out of Texas? Yo, um, I got to go with this group that um, I think, you know, uh, you have a, a comparison with with Outkast. How we're talking about uh, Andre and Big Boy, and yep, that's UGK. Yep. Yes, sir. UGK with with Pimp C and Bum B. Yep. They got that yin yang dynamic, and if they were both the same, they wouldn't be as dope as they were. Uh, so I think Riding Dirty is is yeah. is amazing. I think um, you know, especially Bum B's rapping. Um, you know, uh, Pimp C was always doing the thing, but I feel like Bum B kind of leveled up. But she had joint Murder. I think yo. We went off, yeah. All right, no doubt, no doubt. I got Ghetto Boys, we can't be stopped. But my mom's playing tricks on me. That album cover to me was just bug with him being rushed to the hospital from shooting out his eye. That shit was crazy of me. Amir, what you got out of Texas, bro? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna fast forward it, man. I'm gonna say, honestly, bro. I'm gonna say Travis Scott right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see that. Can't get mad at that one either, man. And after meeting him and after watching this documentary and the yeah. fiber of his person, it just means more. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. 
Totally forgot the shot. Who y'all, Breck, who you got out of Chicago? Quick caveat, hey, Amir, Don Tolliver, that dude is crazy. That's a fact. Um, <laughs> out the shot, Common, Resurrection. Mm -hmm. I'm playing that album back, front to back for anybody that wants to talk about Chicago. All right, now, Burn, now, what you got for the shot? Yeah, I don't know, but. I'm going to go B and college dropout. One, one I would say, uh, Common is shy. My favorite album out of Chicago is the college dropout. All right. Eddie, what you got? Uh, my favorite is Like Water for Chocolate. Um, but um, I, I, I have a, a monkey wrench in it because um, this is one that not a lot of people talk about. The, I think a good representation of Chicago is the Black Album by No ID. Mm. Um, very dope album, very slept on, you know, no ID, you know, producer, got other Chicago artists, not just Common, but State to State is, I, I feel like that's a classic joint right there, State to State. I'm gonna check that out. I think, I think a lot of that got slept on because that dropped right after One Day It'll All Make Sense and Relativity really didn't know how to push, like No ID didn't have the name that he has now, of course, of working with Jay-Z and being Kanye's mentor, so I think relativity really didn't know how to push it. Yeah, you know I mean, and then enough people didn't even ever read the line of notes of Common's album to even know who right. No ID was in the first place. So I think that's why that album gets slept on. Amir, who you got out of Chicago, brother? Man, Vern took both of my joints, bro. I'm not even gonna front. But I'm gonna throw to do to add to the list. I'm gonna say Dog Twisted Fantasy was one of my favorite um, I was uh, the car. Uh, um, okay. For so many for, for so many reasons that you I don't even have to explain to this group of people. We know why. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's what I would say. I'm with you, Rack. I'm Resurrection. Like whenever I think it's not my favorite com album, but mm. that just always yeah. like I think Resurrection was what made me I could talk to somebody in Chicago about, yo, where Cabrini Green at? Or what's this yeah. like? You know, yeah. that's why I used to miss with hip hop. You never have to be somewhere, but just listen to somebody's yeah, music. Yeah. You can yeah, understand yeah. everything through their music and everything oh. like that. We going to LA. What, Rec, what you got? What represents LA to you the most, man? I, I talk about it every time we talk about the West Coast, man. The Chronic. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, not Dre Day, but um, what's the joint, man? Ah. Uh, it's got the uh, P Funk sample. Swing out, sweet cherry yes. stops. Yes. Let me ride. Yes. 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 I, 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 I had to reassess my radio mixes because I kept putting in my damn radio mixes every freaking week. <laughs> <laughs> like, straight up, I had to be like, oh shit, I, put, I played this last week. I can't play this this week. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. The product. Right. Vern, what about you? To represent LA, I'm going with Neighborhood Nip, man. Okay. Um, mm. Just, just, just mm. for the love. <laughs> um, that's a good my, ass pick. My favorite album, I'm going to say To Pimp a Butterfly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Eddie, what you got, man? Uh, <laughs> shoot, man. Um, I may have to go doggy style for both. Uh, <laughs> you know, when, when when I think of LA, man, you know, Snoop, that, that flow, the, you know, obviously had Dre on the production. Um, yo, that's straight LA right there. No doubt, no doubt. Amir, what you got for LA, man? I'm gonna name something different than everybody named to, to expand the the, 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 the the palette here. There you go. He said, I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna say, Crenshaw was not a mixtape, it was definitely out. And I think it, that was a, a pivotal a project for them. Um, mm -hmm. And he represented to be the core of what uh, LA, the fiber mm -hmm. of what a LA do, you know, with some sense would, would move like. Until his demise, but so I, I, I will go with Crenshaw. Yeah, Man, it's so. sad. It's sad that he gone, man. Dang. Yeah. Nip, Nip, <laughs> Nip is a good. Nip is a damn good pick, Vern. Because you know me, I was going easy with Dre. Yeah, you know, yeah. Chronic, you know what I mean. But once you said Nip, it's like, yo, bro. When I be listening to Victory Lap, like that's that just important. It, it L.A. You don't you, you can't listen to that and not feel like you in L.A. Like when yeah. I. When I was in LA, I was like, yo, Ev, you gotta take me over to the marathons. But like, it was like, I ain't never in my life wanna go to fucking Crenshaw. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it's never been <laughs> no part of my time that I've been sitting there feeling like, God damn it, I wanna go to Crenshaw. But, you know, uh, just Nip, Nip's 
just embodied everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. He embodied being from the streets. But you know, I, I always told people I was a fan of Nip before the music, just because of what I do in the in the hoods of DC with my teens and what he was doing in the hoods of Crenshaw with him. So I was a fan before I even heard the music. You know, yeah. just hearing about what he was doing in the neighborhood with stem centers and everything like that. But that's a whole nother piece. Oakland. Wreck, what you got coming out of Oakland, man? I think I know where Burns go, but I'm going to see if this surprises <laughs> me. But Wreck, what you got out of Oakland, man? Uh, I'm going with my man, I Am Sue. I'm going with the Young California mixtape. Uh, HBK Gang, it's a dope artist out of Oakland. They got all kind of artists out there, man. Their, their indie game is heavy. You, you know, got school me to them. Who, who are these people? Heartbreak Gang. Uh, his name is I Am Sue. He's been out, shit, man, going on 15 years. The cat okay. is the cat is nice. Okay. <laughs> the cat is nice. Um, right. You can just pull him up on YouTube and just just. And it's what I is how you spell this literally. So so it's I, M, S U exclamation point. All right. Um, he got so much stuff, man. You got to find what talks to you. Um, I okay. found I found the Young California mixtape, Kilt Two, and a couple other mixtapes that talk to me. So just you said go the Young California. Yeah, Young California mixtape. It's, it's just it's a smooth, laid back, got a West Coast sound to it. It's got a good feel to it. I, right. I used to listen to that when I was up in Alaska. So. It's, no it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good situation. Huh. I definitely check that out. Vern, who you got? All right, my favorite album, is Souls of Mischief, ninety three till infinity. Mm -hmm. yep. And to to represent Oakland, man, too short, bro. <laughs> you already know Ty Shaw, man. That Born to Mac and, and Life is Too Short. <laughs> I can't listen to Born and Mac no more, man. I, I went and went back and listened to the album, and I, I was blushing, man. I'm like, oh my god, was I listening to this? Phil Flem, Phil. Flem. <laughs> you gotta be careful with them albums, bro. You listen to that long enough, you come in the house, be beefing with wifey, and say some shit like, damn, did that come out of my mouth? Like, yeah. damn, man, you know that, yeah. that, that that stuck on you, man. Eddie, what about you out the back? 93 till infinity for for both man i mean just amazing album man like complete you know track one to track what 13 or oh however man yo crazy love it amir what you got out the bag i want to i want to say something different i will to to give the base they named everything i wanted to say already but i'm know what i'm gonna say i don't know if this group is is from the bay um, but Pac Dev had a mixtape years ago with Don Kennedy, yeah. DJ Drama. Mm -hmm. And that shit, yep. it changed my view of how they gave it up. And it was like, it, they, like the intro to that shit was gut, it was, it was, it hit me. I'm like, yeah. I became an instantaneous fan of Pac Dev because of that. So I would give it, I would say they represent that underground, yes. you know, grassroots feel. Like, you know, they probably, they're an extension of what Souls of Mischief wanted to happen for their hip hop music. Right, that's dope. Uh, for me, and y'all know I'm not even a big Too Short fan, but I'm always like, it ain't about what you're a fan of. I think anything Oakland, I always think Too Short. Like, I can't think Oakland and Too Short is not the first thing to come to mind. Not big on his discography, so I'ma just lean on whatever Burns said, Born to Mac. Um, I'ma just <laughs> like lean that way. <laughs> I'ma just lean that way on that. Um, but then my favorite is 93 to infinity. I mean, that's where you lost 93 to infinity Two of my favorite hip-hop songs ever um, So that's that for the show that that's about where we're repping everything like that Amir I heard through Pete sure. posted something the other day that y'all are working on the, the, the album now We got the mixtape, but y'all working on the album now mm -hmm. I'm done man Oh, that's even better. <laughs> Let me explain something to you, man. There's nothing I love hearing better than album done. I think that is the best, <laughs> you yeah. know, news. That's the second best news, the album coming out. Because there are a lot of albums right. that are done and that we still waiting five, six albums, album years for. So that's dope to hear that the album's done. What are we looking at a release date? Do we get it this year? Do we have a date yet? Anything like that? <laughs> Anticipated for this year, I think, you know, initially, uh, I think the initial uh, aim was for August. I don't think that, you know, if I had to use my, you know, my senses, I don't think August is going to be a realistic date for Dope Boy Soul um, because of what's happening with 21 Grams, 
you know, I right. think. Mm-hmm. But it's for a positive reason. 21 grams still circulating and still building lights on it. Right. It's uh, getting people familiarized with, you know, what, you know, pre introduction of me, um, you know, being on True Soul. Uh, but Dope Way Soul been done for like two months, bro. We just been, you know, I'll say this though, it, it, it sounds nothing like, it's nothing remotely close to what you heard on that mixtape. Okay. These are, this is Pete. This is Pete giving you his. And I'm saying what was said to. These are the beats you would have gave Nas, Kanye, or Jay. Mm. These are the beats that on Dope and Soul. Yeah. yeah. Mm. These are the beats that he would have gave them. Not, these are not like play, play beats. These are not loops. This is yes. him getting in his bag and um the joints on there bro and we did 29 records for dope boy soul and he only picked he did your favorite thing he only picked 13 bro so he kept he heard you he said i'm only doing 13 he said, he did 13 <laughs> joints and, it, and I'll, I'll give away this he used that Recording the album with him was a lot different than doing 21 grams. But the. Okay. It was. Un- I was. But the big brother done like. This, this, he, said, he said it before we started recording. He said, this ain't the mixtape. You know, you know this ain't mixtape vibes. We, you have to. This is serious now. So we got in there, me, him, and Jamie stopped. Out, and uh, it was a blessing, bro. Um, Grap heard some of the joints. Um, mm. uh, dope. Dope soul. Dope boy soul. The production on that is apples and oranges between 21 grams and dope boy soul because they were definitely I can't craft that. We left 16 records on the cutting floor and we picked 13 out of 20. A batch of 29. Yeah. What's up, Vern? So, so wait Vern. a minute, Amir. If if I, get, I understand you correctly, arguably the greatest producer in hip hop. And a spitter like yourself didn't just take the first ten songs y'all recorded and just make an album. You know everything. You, you, you know what? They still do that in hip hop. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy we were we were just talking about how the process of the great thing of the '90s was. You record thirty songs, you pick the best fourteen. Some of the other joints may make the soundtrack here and there. You know what I mean? different things like that so we're always talking about how you know that's a lost art so mm-hmm. i think for everybody up here and everybody watching that's a blessing to hear because that that means you're, you're recording the way of the golden era of the 90s yeah. where you don't you know every, you know the other 14 songs may be dope maybe they'll fit the right vibe maybe we're gonna hold this yeah. to something else maybe we're yeah, gonna try yeah. Exactly what he said. Yep. You know, I'm in this shit getting, I'm in there getting emotional. Like, nah, this shit crazy. He like, yo, calm down, bro. We gonna use that, but not. Trust, he said, I know what I'm doing. I said, I know, but this shit is fire. And he, but it was, I fought, I fought with one record on there. I'm not saying it, it was one record on there that I, I was look, I damn near tears. Like, bro, please, don't do this to me, man. Let me get this off. This is crazy. Yo, yo, bro, I'm looking at him like. He looking at Jamie like, you think this shit crazy? I mean, it's but it's all right, it's your album. I'm like, listen, trust me, this shit is crazy. His man like, I ain't produced it, I ain't finished. He said, I, you know, I didn't produce it like I wanted to, is what he said. I said, bro, this shit is complete. What are you talking about? Don't over... Right. And, and this is... Imagine you taking a stand against Pete yeah, Rock. Like, it wasn't... Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like a little brother <laughs> moment. Like, come on, bro, you doing... Come on, let me... Let me... This one is... This, is a, this shit is fire. And he was like, alright. They ended up playing that shit one day we were for the Soul Brothers. And when that record came on, everybody's face did the... Mm. And I just looked at him. And he said, right. <laughs> right. And you did, you did like Jordan on him. Right. I was like, I told you that shit was crazy. And, it, and it, it... When you hear it, it's raw. Pete, that shit. He didn't think it was the beat. I thought. It, I thought it was. I fought for that one. That, that was what I, I fought for. I was like, bro. It was. A, I was so 
I had to then I said, bro, please, come on. Two, three days I asked him, like, bro, you're not gonna use this one? This shit crazy. Right. Nah, nah, we got it. I'm like, oh, I kept looking at him. He went home, probably thought about it, like, I am the man's fucking crazy. I came back to the studio, I, I probably had to puppy face, like, yo, this shit crazy. His one record was crazy. And he just like, no, well, yeah, we gonna use it. I said, all right, fuck yeah. I was like, yo, and then when people here's heard the dope it, part. here's the dope part. I can't wait to hear the album and try to figure out yeah. what's the one like right. you know. I mean, hit you like nigga. Was it that? And I'm like, yo, I done, I done let this shit, <laughs> right. I done let this shit live for a good yeah. month. I think it's number four. I think it's thirteen. Yeah, you know I mean, like, so that's gonna be dope well, to figure definitely- out. For people listening, why I'm even more excited about this album. People don't know Jeremy Staub is Pete's engineer that goes all the way back. To Mac and the Soul Brother, main ingredient, huge piece of that sound. People don't understand how much your engineer plays a part in the music yeah, that you make. He had Jeremy, Pete had, I mean, Cream had Eddie Sancho, Timbaland had, you know, uh, God, who was Timbaland? Um, Jimmy D, um, you know, yeah. Guru was with Just Blaze, like. All of our great producers had that engineer yeah. that just was that's like, right. that, that's like the Phil Jackson with Tex Winters, like coming up with the triangle. Like that's your assistant coach. You know how you get a, a new coach, they be like, eh, that's good, but what's your coaching staff gonna look like? That engineer is like your assistant coach right there on the side. You go to Doc Rivers Chicken Chip in Boston, you talking about Brett. What, what's the coach? Um, Thibodeau. Thibodeau was yeah, um, Thibodeau. Boston's defensive coach when they won the chip. So I'm excited to hear that. So I'm excited, one, because the album's coming. Two, because Pete is giving you the beats he would have gave Jay, Nas, and everybody else. Three, Jeremy Staub is in the picture. And four, I know you're going to bar that shit to death. So oh, yeah. this shit has easily become one of my most anticipated albums from the, for the rest of the year. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And I'll say this to you because Pete, I didn't know what happened. I just know I was rapping. We was in the car. He just, you know, Pete. He, a nigga. You know, I gave you some crazy shit, right? Your shit is fire. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm trying to, like, not to go out. I'm in a bubble. I'm going to keep it a buck. I be in a bubble, bro. I don't even fucking barely. So the process, when I started recording with him, he said, whatever you're doing, do the same shit until we finish. I spoke to the same five people. I ate the same rotation of food. I didn't fuck with nobody outside of that shit until 30, 40, 30, 35 days later when I finished. And even after I did it for so long, I didn't even fuck with anybody that wasn't a part of that creative process. But what I what it did lead me to, he said, bro, do not, whatever you're doing, just step and repeat. I said, he said, he said, everything you're doing, don't change, don't, don't do no different shit, don't try to talk different, don't be different, don't dress different, I need you to do that, peace, beloved, dope boy, soul shit you be doing, and just be a man, if you do anything, cause of course, I was extremely nervous, because you're coming under the shadow of Mecca and the Soul Brother and the main ingredient, and it's gonna automatically be a comparison between me and CL, right, not knowing that I'm like little bro to both people, so... I can't explain that on a record per se, but I do know that like there was a different gravity tugging at me. So I knew, and I ended up calling him, and it's like I expressed him that I was nervous, and he was like, "Yo, man," <laughs> in the peak fashion, "Fuck all that shit, man. You hot? Rhyme over the beats. I got the rest." <laughs> he said, "You got it." It's like fuck all that, fuck all that sensitive shit, man. You. <laughs> I fucking sign you for a reason. Jump on the beat, I got the rest. Right. And right. I didn't have this die. I feel like, like it was like a big brother reinforcement of confidence, man. Because I think us as men of color, man, and black and brown men, we need to do that a lot more. It was definitely, it was a, bro, it was a fellowship recording these projects for the man. I learned a lot from him. Learned a lot from Jamie. And people don't know, Jamie had his hands in a lot of the Tribe Core Quest mixes. If you look at those records, Jamie, you look at Jamie's style, discography. He, for no matter, he did the world is yours. He did, he did um, a lot of shit for Trump. He did a lot. He, so he, when I got in the studio with him one day without Pete, you know, Jamie sat me down and gave me the pre he making a mere setting. He's like, look, man, this shit coming in hot. <laughs> Let me show you how to get this shit together. Cause in my head, I'm thinking I'm recording myself properly. He's like, no. I had to go get a new mic. 
there's a lot of shit that was happening when they got another computer, so I had to really get in alignment with the tier that they record at. Because if you record them with different equipment, you know, first step is me coming into alignment with the shit they were using too. So when I processed the vocals over, it just made for a more seamless um, process. Um, and um, I just started to learn the science, the sound, and take, I really, they'll tell you, I take, I write shit down when they speak to me. Even when y'all, I'm gonna take notes from my conversation or screenshot put it on my phone, my life. Because you have to be a student of life in order to, you know, to process art, man. And I'm a, I learn from everybody on this panel. Some of the records y'all said, albums y'all was named as a mental note. And I'm, go, I'm going to go back and listen to these projects to make sure I didn't miss any gems. So, Dope Boy Soul is a, is a, um, is a, is a, I guess, represents that evolution of, um, you know, Mount Vernon, San New York, uh, uh, hip hop, and just hip hop in general, uh, in general, and, you know, in my own, through my lens, and through guidance of one of the greatest producers of all time, bro. No doubt, no doubt. And again, for people watching, 21 grams, like I said, and now y'all know I've been talking about this album before him, and y'all know I don't do that shit, people come on and I show up. Yo, I've been talking about this album before we started following each other like before I even knew who a man was. It was like, yo, this shit crazy. Y'all need to get up on this. Even when we when we put the show out, man, niggas was like, yo, I ain't know Pete had nothing new out. I'm like, yo, fucking album of the year right there for me at least. You know what I mean? so, and like is I said, it, bro, it on I iTunes. Get... Now I don't think is it on iTunes. It's just on um SoundCloud, right? For right now. Good. That the trick was this, bro, and you know the cat is ain't, ain't, ain't no secret. The samples on that shit uh, you want to okay. play for. Cinema, a cinema, cinema. Yeah, I got you. So we already knew we had that yeah. album coming. You understand? So yeah. It was kind of like we're gonna pour more energy into something we know is, you know, yeah. gonna get them going. But the, the initial thing was why, you know, we could take yeah. our resources and use it more for the push other albums as opposed to the mixtape. And then, you know, if Pete put, uh, monetize, you try to monetize some of those records, you can't, we wanted to put them on SoundCloud or, I mean, not, I mean, well, Spotify, Apple Music and other, um, you know, uh, distribution services, but you can't put them on there without monetizing. Right. That I know right, of. Right, right. You know, right, and, and, right. So, so, and, you know, Pete Rock Sample and Shaka Khan, they come, you know, of course they're going to come <laughs> for his head. <laughs> because he's easily recognizable so yeah. the safe way to do it and the best way to do it to avoid turbulence was to just put it out the way you know we did yeah thank you i see eddie right there yeah so we put yeah. an audio i found out the audio back yeah i got it yeah so everybody out there so that, heard it, 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 it yeah. and i thank you for that man because it definitely let's be clear it definitely shortened the reach because some people are too lazy to go on but we figured that people who really are core listeners find it, will enjoy it, and will help us cultivate more of a following for myself, and um, you know, build a, a community and find my tribe. Because you know, it's one thing to come in on Pete, on the coach, but there's all, all other thing to stand up as a mayor, you know, under the Tuso umbrella as well, and with his, you know, like the, the, the equivalent to a Dr. Dre stamp. You know what I'm saying? Like you know what he did with the game, what he did with Snoop, what he did with Kendrick, etc. So. Yeah. yeah. And stop yelling at me, man. I know I'm lazy, but I got it on SoundCloud, so I'm good now, man. <laughs> <laughs> but so seriously, man, I think, again, just to give folk they flowers, man, it's a huge testament to you because for years, I've always wondered, why don't Pete go get another MC? You know yeah. what I mean? I've been yeah. screaming this for years. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. understand why Pete, for me, I understand they had these legacy groups with Gangstar and Pete CL Smooth, and that's why I love the Prime Project that Royce and Primo did, and like, kind of like Royce touched on what you said, like, no, I'm not here to replace Google. Like, he even said that in one of his rhymes, because again, the people listening may look the same way you felt, like, damn, are people thinking I'm here to replace CL? And, you know, I love that yeah. about Roy saying that, like, nah, I'm not here to replace Google, you know, but, so I've always just wondered why Pete didn't get that. So when I heard this, it was like, yo, finally, like, I've been wondering this for 10 years, like, all the dope MCs in New York City and all over the world now, you know, so for Pete to want to rock with you, bro, that's a testament to just how, how crazy you are and how dope you are right there. So, but, you know, I'm sure you already know you're nice, but just wanted to salute you for that, you know what I mean? <laughs> 
Bro, always, I'm gonna listen, I'm a student, Peter tell you, man, I'm, I'm, I'm in student mode 24 hours a day. Um, you know, and it's like you think you good, you don't think, but it, it, I think it shortens your, your room for growth. It's like been in the gym, you think that oh, I'm in shape, homeboy over there doing 100 push ups, you just did 75 looking at your chest. Right. I'm, on, I'm trying to do 100 push ups, I'm trying to, you know, I work them or work on different flows. I got that gonna be like I think the uh, the real you know testament is gonna be work ethic in the upcoming uh, six to twelve months when people start to get uh, acclimated to dope boy so and what peaceful love I mean and shit like that man and like I said I'm just here you know I'm All right, no doubt no bro yo where can people get at you where can they follow you where can they buy the album I'm still trying to find a spot to buy the vinyl because when I go to True Soul it's like pre-orders. But then it says like like March or whatever, so I didn't know like where it that is. Funny. I gotta update that man, but if you if it's on, I'll send you the link. It's this company called at a uh, vinyl at vinyl index v i n y l i e at index. It's selling um copies of uh um of the actual uh album, um and uh, you can find me man um uh Instagram at uh, a uh, mxxr a, a dot m dot x dot x dot r on uh, Twitter is 25th hour man number two to number five t a h o u m a n um, or just Google a mere a m x x r bro and uh, and p y uh, um, yeah and, and and even if you know w you know I got a couple of my website w, it's peacebeloved dot com p a c e beloved dot com um, and uh, yeah, we working on stuff, man. I got some merch coming. I have some staple piece lovers shirts coming. I think I don't know why, man. I haven't had a hand. This is one of the hats here, actually. Shameless plug. But I have this oh, one. No. With the ED. So, uh, yeah, this is just one. Yeah, this is just one of the joints. And then I have uh, some shirts coming. I definitely get you one, bro. Get y'all some, man. When I will get the load. And um, yeah, that's it, man. Just like I said, man. Dope boy, soul on the way. True soul record. Shout out to my bro, Pete. Pete, my man. Uh, Jamie Stowe, my man G Weeks, Howie McDuffie, uh, everybody, my man Brandon, everybody's been helping me. Um, my man BLB, I gotta shout out BLB, I'm shot five crazy videos for me in LA, man. Uh, most people know him from his brother Young Thug, Future, and Gucci. Um, okay. But he's a good friend, he's a good friend of mine, and it's just crazy to see him come do hip hop videos. You know what I'm saying? So I right. think for people to see him shoot this kind of stuff versus he shot with those guys is gonna be um, interesting. Um, yeah, man, shout out to the whole Mount Vernon, New Rochelle Nine, the whole Nine One Four, New York City, man, and, and everywhere globally, man. The love, the love, the love, the love, good vibes, man. You know? and, and I thank y'all, guys, bro. No doubt, no doubt. Eddie, where can they get at you, good brother? On Twitter, uh, you catch me at Eddie D eighty on Instagram, Freed Styles. And my website, freestyles.com, um, where, you know, I promote um, independent hip hop. Um, yo, man, I know I know Pete is a big name, but, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm going to write up something about this 21 Grants because it's a project that not a lot of people are talking about yet. So uh, you know, I'll definitely do that. All right. No doubt. Vern, where can they get at you when they try to get a crib out in ACL? Before they get the crib, they got to watch Apartment 5B and know that we sponsored by What's the Scenario? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, God. One of these days, this is what, this is what happens <laughs> yeah. when you get older. Yeah. Uh -huh. You pray for something that you want your podcast to get sponsorship. You get sponsorship, then you forget to say the sponsorship. That's old. That's that's forty seven years. <laughs> What's the scenario? Check it out. You'll definitely argue over this. So what games dot com. Use promo yeah. code Park Five B. You get free shipping. It's a it's card game scenario. Would you say, a man? Fire, that's fire. <laughs> I even... Yeah, it, it, and it's going to start arguments. We've done yeah, it will. It will. It will. All yeah, we do is yeah. argue over <laughs> something. But it's still a dope game. It's definitely yeah. going to start dope conversation. Good looking for the alley oop bar, too. All right. No, no doubt. But uh, Instagram at V the Lone Closer. Um, and on Twitter, V Chandler 10. All right. DJ Rec One, where can they get at you, good brother? I got to make sure I grab the game. <laughs> Y'all just made me feel real, real lonely. <laughs> 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 hey man um check me on instagram uh at dj rec one and e twitter is at dj rec one 
uh, Thursdays, you can catch me on what K102, uh, Kennedy Radio. Uh, Fridays and Saturdays, catch me on Texas City Radio, four to five. All right, no doubt. Y'all already know this with me, Kill889, Twitter, IG, Will Make Beats, Food.com. Will Maddock is out. Me and Vegas is EP saluting his cousin, the ill, the ill, uh, I'm bugging. Ill Will, the Queensbridge <laughs> legend, Nas's best friend, all the ill will, rest in peace. That's Vegas' cousin, so this is an EP dedicated to Will's memory. All proceeds from any album sales, any merch, goes directly to Miss Versi, who if you've ever listened to Nas' second childhood, the verse where he says, never curse in front of Miss Versi. That's Ill Will's mother, that's Vegas' aunt, so all proceeds from this project will be going to her. Uh, salute to everybody who's been showing us love on the project. This is probably our fifth album together, but this one is definitely getting the most love, so I appreciate everybody for that. Now check y'all next week, peoples. <laughs> <laughs>